Hello, uh, everybody, and welcome to the Afternoon Tune. I am your host, Josh, and with me are my two co-hosts. It's your boy, Chase. And it's your boy, Nick. Um, and we got some special guests coming on today. Uh, some people uh, I've been following for a little bit um, on Twitch and various other kind of social medias and things like that. Uh, really fun streamers. Um, and these are the stream queens. Um, you got Sadie's, um, you got Vivian, and you got Sarah. Um, and just to, you know, you guys, if you want to, you know, introduce yourselves and, you know, let people know what you're all about and, you know, how you started and everything like that. Uh, go first. Yeah, Mercedes, go first. You're on, you're on top. Oh, yes. Go. I have the cat ears, so I'm a gamer girl. Um, <laughs> my name is Mercedes. Um, I started streaming, I don't even know when. I think we're approaching a year. I started streaming after mm -hmm. Viv started streaming, Viv and Sarah. Um, before we all started to give a little bit of background about us, we really wanted to do a podcast. <laughs> it was our first idea. Um, and then we kind of just went more into gaming. We kind of um uh do co-op games with each other sometimes um as far as the internet goes i like to uh say a lot about myself that maybe no one wants to hear <laughs> and i just like that i can scream into the void about myself um and that's that's basically it for me yeah okay uh i can go afterwards yeah Vivian? sure thing yeah mm -hmm. Uh, I think I actually started streaming around the ex exact same time that Mercedes and Sarah Strips wanted to stream as well. I think it was kind of like a hive mind thing or like a domino effect. But um, currently, actually, when I started streaming, I was in grad school. Fast forward, I would say around like nine months later, I dropped out. Um, and now I'm writing. Yeah, I'm writing on that joke for a little bit um, about how just, you know, how much of a failure I'm becoming quarantine jokingly but not really um and aside from like streaming like what i like to do outside is probably just scroll on tiktok for endless hours and job hunt and furniture shop right now my mm -hmm. life's pretty boring <laughs> okay uh sarah i can yeah i can go next um hi sorry i'm a blank void um <laughs> i try to stay on the dl um but i'm sarah also known as sari sorry however we pronounce it um and uh, i live in los angeles so i'm the only american of the stream queens <laughs> which sucks for me um so glad you guys have universal health care and um started streaming i actually started streaming like a little bit after the pandemic started like really awful choices things because we all met each other being into this really awful app called choices and genuinely i don't understand why we all made Tumblr accounts for this game because we can objectively say like, it's not a good game anymore. No. Maybe it used to be, and we're we're frankly too cool to be playing it. So we don't really know what was the situation there, mm -hmm. but that's how we met. Um, and we became friends because there was this girl who uh, pretended she had cancer and then died because she said she got um, a UTI from drinking too much sweet tea and then it became kidney cancer and then she died and everyone in the fandom was like oh that seems normal and then like me and Vivian and Mercedes were like so do you think that like maybe that was not and then finally we were like it was fake and that's how we became friends then we went on to expose more <laughs> cancer fakers it's oh, a wow. long story, so I won't get into all of it. <laughs> wow. but, um, we, we've been friends since like 2017, but the streaming was a, a recent thing. And um, I have just been streaming Dragon Age for the past six months with yeah. some intermittent Nancy Drew. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a little bit about me and our cancer faking killer past. Oh, wow. The international super spies, if you will. Exactly. <laughs> Fitting wow. that we did Black Widow. Yeah. Yeah, all the widows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very fitting. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> definitely should have your own Netflix documentary by now, most definitely. Uh, <laughs> I mean, right? I know, I'm waiting. I, I, mean, uh, I mean, come on. Someone tag. Uh, I mean, we, right we went undercover, so it was pretty intense. <laughs> it there was, was a lot. Sure it was a full sting operation. That's another story. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's for a later time. Um, so you hear it, Netflix. Cut the check. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and the reason that I know them all uh, is because of Chase. So Chase, how do you like? How did you get involved? 
uh, with them as well. It's really the hard I, I really I, want to know. I just stumbled onto a Fall Guys stream. One of my homies was like, yo, you got to check out this game, Fall Guys. And I was just like, mm, I don't know, maybe let me check out some streams before I like spend money on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just ended up on, on uh, Mercedes streams. Um, and I think TB was actually playing it, her boyfriend. Um, yeah, I'm not and <laughs> watching them play and having fun with it, like, you know, we ended up having like this great rapport, just like, you know, laughing at the experience, but um, ended up not buying Fall Guys, though. <laughs> it didn't convince me to buy Fall Guys at all. <laughs> but um, it was just cool. Uh, they're just cool people to hang out with. Um, and they all do great streams. They are they're all very interactive with the chat, you know. Yeah. Um so yeah. Yeah, very much so cuz um because when one of them and streams, they're learning a lot about streaming through them, you know. Oh yeah. Cuz when one of them streams Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <Bad habit. laughs> um yeah, cuz if you know, like let's say for instance if Sadie's is streaming, you're going to see Vivian and you're going to see Sarah in the chat like you know, I've never oh, yeah. been in a stream where I haven't seen the both of them, and I haven't never been in a stream of Vivian's where I haven't seen Sadie's, I haven't seen Sarah, and you know what I mean. So they, you know, they do, you know, they do support each other a lot and come to each other's streams, and then they do the collab streams. Because if which... we're not there, we're gonna lose our affiliate status, boys. <laughs> we gotta show up. We gotta show up. <laughs> but also, we love each other, so there's exactly. that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, I mean, you really feel that the chemistry between the three of them is, is really great and really fun. So, I mean, that's why I had them on, um, you know, t today to discuss Black Widow. Um, and we're also going to discuss uh, just a variety of other topics as well, movies as well. We got The Forever Purge. Um, we're going to do Tomorrow War. Um, and we're going to do Werewolves Within, which is a, a smaller movie um, that we're going to do. And also touch on some news. Um, as well, uh, get into just uh, Richard Donner. He passed pretty recently, legendary director of uh, famous movies such as, of course, Superman the movie, uh, classic iconic film, um, Goonies and Lethal Weapon. So we're going to go into his legacy and what he's done for film and, you know, his impact on film. Um, he passed away at 91 years old, 91. Um, and we're also going to... Um, yeah, so we're going to go into that and also discuss uh, Marvel. Uh, they put out a new trailer for the What If... Uh, animated series that they're doing that's going to come up in August 11th so right after Loki ends you can have another Marvel fix with on the Disney Plus series with the animated series yeah, with Marvel them. yeah Marvel is basically like that drug dealer on the corner they gave you your your taste with WandaVision and now they keep it coming <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Like uh, drug to other stronger <laughs> drugs, yeah. <laughs> um, Division was the gateway drug, and now now it's full blown heroin. Yeah. It didn't work for me. I rise above the influences. You were watching the Gear commercials and you took them seriously. I he you. gave us some subpar <laughs> product on Captain America and Winter Soldier, but you know, but I'm getting back through it with Loki. We're getting back to where we were yeah. at. So well, it's we're, not gonna talk about, we're not going to talk about we're not going to talk about that opinion. <laughs> uh, so it is interesting because like um, when I presented the idea to them about you know doing Black Widow, um, Say said she didn't know anything about Marvel at all, and uh, so I want to know if that's the case. So like Sarah, you said you do follow the Marvel stuff, right? Yes. So I'm actually a fat nerd, and I used to read like the Spider Man comic books um, as a child. So I know like enough um but yeah mercedes is going in blind so that's always fun okay and vivian do you follow the marvel stuff at all or comic book movies or anything like that Anything? i i see it on my timelines and everything but i'm <laughs> not like one to like line up on the, for the box <laughs> office and everything like i just watched infinity war if that's the, no end Girl. game's the last one right end game's the you last one. you just movie. watched it before this I, game, no, I just watched it like two game. months ago yeah, before okay. this movie, I think Infinity War was one of the only ones I've seen. But I've seen the Spider-Man movies because I oh, yeah. like the new Tom Holland Tom ones because I think <laughs> he looks like my baby brother. So I'm like, oh my god, my brother, I have to support him. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm maybe I'm a Stanny then in comparison to these two because I've seen everything. Okay. Yeah, me okay. and Viv are very base level. Mm. Base level, okay. So it'll be interesting to hear, you know, you It'll guys... be good to get that perspective. Yeah, very, very much so. 
Um, all right, so uh, let's get into it. Let's get into Black Widow. Uh, this is finally uh, the film starring Black Widow. Um, now it's just Hawkeye who doesn't have his own solo film out of the original Avengers. And uh, you must think like... Guess what? He ain't getting one. Yeah, well, at yeah, least he's getting... Will. He's getting his own like little Disney Plus series, so hooray for him! You know, happy. You know, he gets. To... I thought his daughter was. No, it's him and his daughter. It's called the Hawkeye series, so it's him and his okay. daughter. Um, so he gets to shoot his little bow and arrows and be happy, you know, um, and his own little Disney Plus series. Um, so and then I feel like you don't like Hawkeye that much. <laughs> you know, no, I. I... <laughs> you know, the movies don't like Hawkeye. <laughs> I, I like Hawkeye. I think um, Hawkeye especially. Is Especially based on the end credits scene from Black Widow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, uh, yeah, which we'll, we'll um, get to. Yeah, which we'll get to. And just to let people know, so we are going to do a spoiler section um, of the movie, and we're going to warn people, of course, when it is spoilers coming up and everything like that. Um, so, and you might be thinking, um, they're doing a Black Widow movie, um, and the last time we saw Black Widow, um, you know, she was basically like, a cockroach that she sprayed raid on basically i mean that's pretty much the last image that we've seen of black widow um and you go like well how are they going to make a movie about um well it's a prequel so it's all about a little bit of her history coming up in the red room her training um and as a black widow um and so it's a it's set before it's set before Infinity War and right after Civil War uh, because the movie opens up with uh, Thunderbolt Ross chasing her for violating the Sokovia Accords. Um, and so if you follow the events of the movies like Sarah, you would know like what happened in Civil War and which kind of leads into this. Um, so, you know, with this film, you know, you have Florence Pugh, you have Rachel Wise, you have uh, David Harbour, who kind of mainly fill out the cast and also Ray Winstone here who plays the villain. And kind of really, you know, one of the things about this film is I feel like it's more Florence Pugh driving things. And we'll we'll get into kind of more of that when we discuss things. But it's, you know Yeah, I feel like I feel like Disney might have made the right call charging thirty dollars for Disney Plus so they could pay for uh, Florence Pugh's back surgery for carrying this entire movie. Yeah. Agree. She really, she really did. Uh because yeah. Are you I, listening, Scarlett? <laughs> like, do y'all hear this, Scarlett? <laughs> yeah. Wait, hold on. How do you want to do ScarJo like that, though? <laughs> I know. Our Asian well, queen. You're, you're one of our... ScarJo, you're, I love you. You're one of our Asian icons. The Asian representation mm, one of in us. this Thank movie. Thank you so much. I am so thankful to <laughs> finally see it. I'm like I'm a crab so in a bucket, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like see me it. on screen. Yeah. I, I mean, Nick, you should Just be tearing very... tearing down... Yeah, you should be very happy, Nick. I mean, you know, you're being represented right there. You know, even before Shang Chi comes out, you know what I mean. You're getting nice representation there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, yeah. Scarlet walked so Simu Liu could run. Yeah, abs- absolutely. You know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> or I don't know, fly and kick somebody. I guess. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm just going to go around and just get kind of general thoughts here. So, Chase, what were your kind of general thoughts of Black Widow and of the film? Because I know this film has been a thing, you know, it was supposed to come out last year, but then it got delayed because of the pandemic. Then it got delayed again. Mm. Then it got delayed again. Um, and then mm. now it's finally going to come out. So I just want to get your kind of general impressions and, and thoughts. And the mouse finally said, fuck it, put it on streaming and theaters. Yeah. Well... I am happy I didn't pay thirty dollars for it. I will say that much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, my general thoughts, I guess, I guess I'd just say it's very generic. There's not too much. Uh, there's not. It, this film really didn't need to be made. <laughs> mm. um, it doesn't really add too much to the universe as a whole. Um, it's a very basic plot. Like even some of the the side stories that they talk about that happened sound more interesting than what happened here. You kind of just get the generic. Um, all right, uh, let's get the super spy to stop the Russians again. Like, and then that's kind of just the whole plot. And the villain that you know that they posted as the as the main antagonist, Taskmaster, they kind of shafted to the side. Mm. Uh, uh, it, it, it was kind of underwhelming for me. Okay. Uh, Nick? I mean, I honestly didn't really have that much expectations for Black Widow anyway, because mostly you're asking us to to put emotional weight onto a character who we already know how, 
how Natasha's story ends. Yeah. We know that yeah. she dies in Endgame, and therefore, why even why should we even care that she's getting her own movie now? It kind of came out like five years too late. It's like Mayweather Pacquiao. They fought five, two years too late. <laughs> yeah, when they're both out of their prime. Oh. Mm-hmm. But that being said, I honestly really... I'm a sucker for spy movies, and that is a lot of what I was getting here. This feels like mm-hmm. a like a born movie with <laughs> I'd say slightly better action in it. And again, Florence Pugh, she is like coming out the gate as probably one gonna be one of the one of the best uh, uh, Marvel characters in this next phase that we're going to, especially given the tease that we have her her in in the post credit scene which i won't give away right now hmm. but i dug all the performances and i get your critique about what they chose to do with taskmaster but because of the reveal i think that's intentional okay but and i think mm, how we'll and, I, <laughs> and i kind of appreciate how dark this movie got okay. because it is getting into some dark places that marvel has more or less shied away from we got hints of it mm. during uh natasha's flashbacks in age of ultron and then they went full on here okay um sadie's um yeah so going into the movie i didn't have a whole lot of context so i was like you know what i'm not even gonna like look up anything i'm just gonna kind of see the movie and um, figure it out from there. Um, I will say that even given my minimal mo- uh, knowledge of the franchise and everything with Black Widow and her story, it did feel very generic. She didn't feel like the centerpiece in her home in her own movie. She felt mm-hmm. just kind of like a background to setting up whatever Midsommar Florence Pugh is going to do. So, um, <laughs> and I'm the type of person, I, I won't say too much about what I read because we'll probably get into like the meat and potatoes of it all a bit later. But mm-hmm. when I watch something, I have to kind of read up about it after just so um, it synthesizes in my brain better because I'm not very <laughs> smart. Um, and a lot of people were saying it seemed like a movie to just uh, tie up loose ends in terms of her death and make pe- people feel better about it. And mm-hmm. it gave her more of a, a heart and like morality, I guess. And that's kind of what I felt like it was pushing. She was emotional through it and she wasn't, yeah, it, it just seemed like a, a a way to kind of push, okay, you know, now we can see more of her backstory, and now she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, Vivian? I'm kind of, I feel like I'm kind of on the same wavelength as you guys. I will say, though, that I am really happy that the OG, like, very, like, the first, like, female OG, like, Avenger finally got a movie, even though it's, mm-hmm. like, way past due her time. Mm-hmm. So I was really happy about that um but again like as chase said like it's like five years like like behind like her prime her prime years for that yeah um i also went to the movie not knowing i didn't know much about black widow's backstory i didn't know like the red room the training camps that she was put in so the first half of the movie made no sense to me i started connecting dots like within like the middle and without spoiling much i have to admit like as embarrassing as it was i didn't make any sibling or family connections i thought florence Pugh and scarjo were giving major fruity vibes <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, women, yeah, yeah. <laughs> women loving women vibes until i realized like oh wait that's her sister Oops. well they're not I mean, related really gonna stop the tumblr <laughs> not the alabama of it all but are they really blood related yeah, no. i mean if you guys have seen loki marvel's not afraid to go <laughs> into true. They cannot go <laughs> yeah just banjos intensifying yeah. uh, um sarah cool um so as the only person who apparently knew anything going into this movie, um, I, well, first of all, I mean, the casting was incredible. Didn't, I didn't realize for some reason that David Harbour was in it. Stranger Things mm-hmm. is probably my favorite television show of all time. So um, to see him, I was like super excited. And then obviously Rachel Weiss is like, like, I mean, iconic, the mummy. Um, so like they, and Florence Pugh, as we've mentioned a million times, literally carried the whole thing. So I felt like that kind of sucked because then you had our girl ScarJo just giving, go girl, give us nothing. Um, like during that whole film, 
up against this like crew of such formidable actors. But um, I. I was starting to get like Incredibles vibes. Like I, I was a little like, why do we have this, the families kicking butt together when I really didn't feel a lot of the family camaraderie. Like it would have made more sense to me if their assignment in Ohio had been longer than three years, but then they were all like crying at the table and betraying their homelands for each other immediately. And it didn't really ring true for me. Um, and the Russian accents were, uh, were were hard. We really struggled with that. Um, didn't did I just kind of felt like maybe they could all just be American. It could have been a better transition point, but no. Um, but yeah, agreed on the fact. Um, like it was it was too late. The fact that we already know what happens to her get, really lost a lot of the emotional significance. There's not a lot of like tension when you know that she's going to survive because she has to die later. Um, and I actually wanted there to be more spy stuff. Like I mm -hmm. thought they could have done some really cool stuff with like going into her backstory and how the training happened and how the widows were created, but they really skipped over that part, which was what I was most interested in. Mm -hmm. Um, but I am excited to see Florence and, and see where they go with that. And if they take her character, like into being sort of the new Black Widow. Um, I mean, she obviously stole the show in the entire movie. Uh, David Harper was great, comedic relief. I also wish that there was more backstory on his character. Like, wh why did they just suddenly expect us all to know what the Red Guardian was, especially if you're not, like if you're Mercedes and Viv and you don't know anything about the Marvel Universe. Um, but did, I mean, he he's great in everything that he does. So he yeah. also, like I enjoyed the little comedy element that he brought. Okay. Um, to your point, so, uh, you know, I will uh, agree with you on the first half of the movie. Because I was, the first half of the movie starts off really good. Because it's basically the Americans. And if you've ever seen the, yeah. Amer um, the Americans, it was a show on yeah. FX. Um, and it starred Carrie Russell in it. And it was all about these kind of Russian spies that were there to infiltrate America and how they worked. And it's a, it's a really great show. It ended um, like a few years ago. And even the opening of the of the movie where they have kind of these images showing of like the, the Red Room training of you see a young uh, Natasha and you see her training, even that there's music that's playing over it and these quick images. It even reminds yep. me of similar. Yep, we, of yep, we rehired the sad piano emo yep. and now she's covering Nirvana. Yeah, that was where Mercedes and I were both like, what is this? Like, I, what is this slow down? I, tell rule, I hate when any show takes like a song and just slows and like just play the original or pick a song that better suits the mood. It was it. it yeah. And it went on too long. Like they did the whole song. And I was yeah, like, oh, was, my yeah. God. That was a full music long. video. Almost, yeah. Yeah. Almost became, I thought we were I thought I was watching in the Heights for a second. It went on for so long. Oh, so like, like it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, so, I mean, I, I thought that was like, you know, kind of really good. I mean, I agree somewhat about the song. I was like, you know, the slow down thing, but I thought that was a little bit of a poor choice, but I thought, you know, like, you know, the Sarah's, opening was awesome. Yeah. The opening was, mm -hmm. was really great. And like you said, I wanted to see more of that, more delved into the red room, mm -hmm. more about, you know, the conditioning of these young girls becoming widows and what that training is like and the things that they have to go through. And then. I don't think that, you know, they, they give hints at it throughout the movie. And this one, they really more talk about it, um, you know, fully, you know, more because Black Widow throughout her time in the movies, you know, she's somewhat discussed a little bit here and there, you know, stuff of what happened to her in her past, but not to this degree that we really get a chance to really explore. So I thought this would should have been a better opportunity to really explore her training and, and just what it's, you know, that whole thing and what it's like to be a widow and to get, you know, kind of, you know, Vivian and Sadie's and Sarah's point, you know, kind of get their perspective on this um, about like when Nick talks about, you know, the darker elements of this and how the film is kind of more or less touching on sex trafficking or human trafficking, you know, especially when you're dealing with, you know, young girls yeah. and, and, and young women, you know, and, you know, one of the big villain speeches in this is Ray Winslow talking about like, you know what I'm never going to run out of is young girls. I'm always going to have an endless supply of young girls all around the world. Jesus Christ. All right, Jeffrey Epstein. That's <laughs> yeah. not a flex, mister. That you know, gave me such a chill. Flex. That one line was real creepy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get you guys' well, perspective on that. Be creepy, so I um, I think I think you make a really good point. Um, I feel like like I said before, 
with everything I read, um, it was their way of tying up loose ends with her. They wanted to do so much. They wanted to show her backstory. They wanted to see her family life. They wanted to talk about her mom. They wanted to see her her ties with her sister. And and mm-hmm. I just think because of all the things they were trying to do, it was poorly executed. It was very much quantity over quality, I mm-hmm. think. Um, because the only time we saw her training was like in the very beginning with the sad Nirvana the weird cover. Um, and she was just like, and then that was it. And then all of a sudden she's this super spy. And I'm like, damn, like I could, maybe I could be a super spy if that's all it takes. But like, <laughs> it just um, takes blue hair. You gotta yeah, get the blue yeah. hair. Literally. Yeah, and it, montage. Exactly. And, um, and the whole thing with the family just seemed kind of left field because I, I mean, to every movie, I guess for benefit of the doubt or the devil's advocate, it's like people react to things very differently, but in, in, in the context of the movie, she was not caring about her family and she was like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then it all it takes is Rachel Weisz being like, look at our photo album. And she's like, fuck. Like, I was like, what? Like, it, it just seemed, it seemed very confusing for me. Yeah. And, and, and I do stand by my point where it's just, it, they were doing trying to do too much, which resulted in <laughs> very little being actually done. Yeah. Mercedes, I I'm trying to agree with you a little bit on a lot of the family elements. They seemed a little bit rushed, but I think the performances from everybody managed to sell it, even if the writing doesn't do it as much justice. Yeah, and and that's I agree with you, and that's what and that's what Sarah said too. It's it's an all star cast, so when you throw oh, yeah. a bunch of pros in a room, it's kind of hard for it not to hit like I'm, I'm i commend them for kind of taking the script to where they needed to take it um but i i always just think and maybe this takes away from my movie watching experience and i'm always like oh my god like what are these actors thinking like do they like the script and so i, I just read it into too much like the very bare bones of the story and um to me it just didn't make a lot of sense their performances were great but yeah that it was very confusing for me mm-hmm. i I would say going back to the like the that creepy line about like the renewable resource basically being young girls. I was glad that they um, addressed the whole like forced sterilization thing that they randomly threw in as like a throwaway line in one of the earlier Marvel movies um, when they had that very ill-fated romance plotline with the Incredible Hulk and Black Widow, which we just won't talk about. But um, I like, and I always kind of hate when they make female characters like all centered around their fertility but i i feel like this was actually an interesting example of like how i mean dark literally this was is that they and and florence pew joking about it i actually thought was like good because i feel like there's really no other way to address it without it just being like horrific um but just the fact that they like removed everything about them that made them like able to live individual lives again it made me want to go back to more of the this beginning with the training and I feel like that could have made the villain more impactful because mm. I think one of you mentioned this earlier is like I really did not care about this man because I barely saw him he was in the film for like five minutes I didn't really see him as pulling any strings like mm. he wasn't he wasn't he said some creepy stuff and he had some creepy things going on but if he had been there as like a solid character throughout so much more of her life I, I think it would have hit harder mm. um, but I am I am glad that they like touched on a few of those things more um and didn't make it like a central point because again it it's really annoying when there's like a female movie and the only things they can talk about are like sexual violence or like having children so it was good to steer away from that a little but yeah i feel like ultimately they rested a lot on the power of the actors as we've said okay you know what now that you bring up like the forced sterilization like I guess comment. It felt like really forced. Um, I think it was when they're um, rescuing the plane, David yeah. Harbour's character. Yeah, I forget oh, his yeah. name. Yeah. And then he was like, "Oh, like what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, are you on your time a month or something?" And she's like, "No, I can't be because that of my you know, forced sterilization." Yeah, so, a lot of like the trauma or like I guess unfortunate things that um, the widows have gone through. Like, and we want to emphasize that in the movie. It feels like they're really pushing for that as like a damsel, damsel in distress kind of trope, but obviously not because they're spies. Mm. Yeah. I agree with the, the lead in comment for like, I could just tell that like David Harbour was like, why am I making a 
time of the month joke in 2021. But it made sense for his character being an idiot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was like a weird, it was kind of a forced segue into that conversation, which I'm glad they had it. But it was like, we're driving around in our jet and then it's like, hey, let's talk about how we have no uteruses. <laughs> like, it's oh, like they had a maybe... checklist almost of like, what else exactly. do we need to say? And they're like, oh, the <laughs> uterus thing. Oh my fucking God. Okay, we're on a plane. Yeah, like, fuck it. Let's just say we yeah, have no other... And- to put it <laughs> they, they already yeah, discussed that, that too that when they were like together talking from, about yeah. that felt like a joke from like phase one marvel when mm. oh yeah Sweden was still like a huge influence on where the movies were going in well. a huge influence on the comedic tone of every movie mm-hmm. yeah uh but they did also discuss like all of that together um um scar joe and florence um when they were it was one of the night scenes when, I, when when they were talking about just like you ever wanted a kid or anything like that, and they oh yeah throw right. over all when that. they were drinking beers uh, or whatever yeah yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. talking about uh, aspirations that they just will never have yeah this is a, a really f- female centered comment I guess but what was the hair situation going on with Scarlett I she was pulling the weirdest looks out of her hair I like the weird long braid thing um, that, like, right yeah. <laughs> What was up with some of her hair? Like Florence always looking good, keeping it polished. I was like, Black Widow just put it in a bun. Like I, there was really a lot of stress for me with the hair <laughs> and the weird braids. This is not Russian. It this was is not the American. hair. And, and she had to flip it. I, when I was watching Scarlett Johansson, she, she does this weird thing pose. with her mouth. That's true. She, yeah, mm-hmm. she does a weird mouth thing all the time, Scarlett Johansson, and I was like, I this is ruining my experience. It's <laughs> ruining my immersion. Can you? Um, what's the weird name? Yeah, can you imitate it? Okay, it's it's very it's about though. I know. Very, it's very Debbie Ryan, and like if she's reacting to what Florence Pugh <laughs> was saying, she'll just be like. <laughs> and her mouth is moving. I'm like, why is her mouth about. acting? We, you, if you go back, I watched the last part of it today again because I was in and out of sleep and I was watching it with my boyfriend. And I'm like, just watch her mouth. He's like, what the fuck is she doing? I'm like, what does she have in there, a frog? That's Tom Holland's thing. Let him have it. But um, yeah, I, sorry, I had to say that as Sarah okay. brought up the, the hair because it was really a chip on my shoulder <laughs> as i was watching um yeah i mean when you uh when we talk about like other characters and you mentioned like david harbour and his character kind of being an idiot um you know his character being the you know the red guardian who's you know the captain america of russia uh basically and you know they established that a guy hunting for his old glory days and you know how you know he felt bad that he was kind of yeah. this mission of undercover he's like i should be doing greater yeah, things um... yeah go ahead Oh my god. Yeah, you brought up the Incredibles comparison. Oh my god, he has the exact same arc as in Mr. Incredible. Exactly. He's even too <laughs> oh fat for god. the suit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean that yeah, yeah that's, he I yeah. Oh, I was I was gonna say he like really is excellent at the um, gruff, uh, unwilling yeah. father role. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I wish he'd been like Which slightly less get- stupid. <laughs> but yeah, you, but that's what you get David Harbour for now. You get True. Him for lovable idiot, <laughs> instead of like his earlier career where he was always, he's a cop, mm. always yeah. a corrupt go- cop meant to be from Boston. I yeah. was thinking too because obviously when you see him, it's hard not to think about Stranger Things, and I was like, <laughs> wait a damn minute, it is eleven. This is like twelve, and like now he's just <laughs> he's Officer Jumper or something. Like it yeah, felt yeah, very he, much the yeah, same. He, he, yeah, um, he's uh, working with uh, like uh, 13 through 25 now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, it was hard not to think of that. Um, and this is probably just a personal preference thing, but one of the reasons I shy away from Marvel movies and one of the things I don't really like about them so much is kind of the the corny or one-liner comedy knee slapper thing. Mm. Um, so whereas, you know, lots of people like him for that, I was just like kind of like, okay. Um, but it... it it's because it's translating from a comic to a movie, right? So they're trying to very much give that feel and they're going to have that. But um, so definitely true. a lot of the things he said, and sometimes Florence too, bless her, she did an amazing job. But just some of the things she said, I was like, okay, girly, let's reel it in. It's When it's Florence enough. said, when Florence said, oh, this would be a cool way to die. I was like, why is this happening right now? Let's not do <laughs> I was this. Like, you would not think that. Like, exactly. Yeah, you were really good at her own thoughts. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, also, I just hated that they gave David Harbour. They'll go to like, I, I am Russian, ma'am. I cannot speak the English. Like, okay, first of all, you 
were undercover in Ohio for three years. Like, yeah. I, yeah. undercover in Ohio for three years, and in that earlier scene, was speaking with a fluent perfect. American accent. Mm. That's why when they became perfect. Russian, I was like, "Where yeah, what, are we?" What? I was like, "Why did they have to act like can't Russian people?" immigrate to ohio i was like is that really gonna give them away they're like oh you're russian you're especially fucking. in the 90s I mean, it would have stood out more if they went to like minnesota yeah minnesota true <laughs> yeah. oh uh hey thank you chill he just uh raided us hey thank you very much chill for that uh chill's a good guy um and uh we also have rachel wise in here who's um you know she was the mother figure um a part of the undercover so she was you know the mother to uh to natasha and to you know florence Pugh when they were undercover and uh you know when you speak about the russian accents i don't know i saw somebody uh on tiktok tiktok say they were russian and they had like a russian father and they watched the movie with them and the russian dad said he thought the accents were pretty good so um i don't know i mean you know sometimes it did seem like some of the stuff was kind of bouncing a little bit i don't know i don't i'm not an expert in russian accents so um i can't really say if they did a fantastic job I mean, or a poor job I mean, all that much movies and accents are kind of all over the place anyway truth like, yeah uh, yeah yeah, like I mean, Scarlett Thor. Johansson's just speaking with a normal <laughs> American accent. Wanda, Wanda Maximoff, her accents goes in and out. Yeah. Um, As someone who weirdly grew up in a Orthodox Russian community, we had like a shitload of Russians where I lived. Um, I think the Russians were probably just thrilled to see some Russians that weren't communists. Uh, they really don't. They're just like, great, we're going to show up as communists again. So it's like, okay, some good Russians, maybe a little. Maybe they're going to let the accent slide. Mm, okay. Uh, maybe maybe that's the reason. I don't know. But, um, you know, I think the, the best parts of this movie... Um, I think the opening, as we talked about, I thought was really great. But also, you know, the interactions with Scarlett Johansson and with Florence Pugh, I think, are great. When it's when it's two of them, I think mm -hmm. that's when stuff is yeah. really, really, really excellent, really um, superb stuff. And and when we talked about it in the film, so you know, Florence Pugh, she kind of ignites things. When, you know, she's on a mission and she's hunting down this other former kind of defected widow. Um, who's coming up with this serum to basically free all the other widows and and she ends up killing her but she gets a dose of the serum after she kills her and it kind of wakes her up from this mind control and that kind of sets her on this mission and black widow she kind of just grabs her and goes like okay who's another person i can get and that can also help me and kind of just so it, that's the reason why i think it feels like black widow kind of just tags along it kind of feels like she's just kind of pulled into things totally Instead of it really being her story and where she's really pushing things and where she's really moving the story forward, it just seems like she's just a part of things to just help out. You know what I mean? It's not really her central thing that's really her fight uh, all that much. Even though she is a part of the Red Room and she was a part of that whole thing, but she had thought, as you see in the movie, that she had thought that ended, she had thought that was already defected already, already kind of destroyed, um, but it's it's still been going on. Um, I wanted to get you guys' opinion on how do you feel about the whole kind of mind control aspect of like that and instead of it just being like these people who were kind of psychologically controlled not ne not necessarily chemically controlled you know what i mean what, what do you think about that element and, and instead of it just being like hmm. this guy that the villain ray winstone he's more or less a pimp so to speak but you know in, in this it's like kind right. of like more like you know, chemical instead of it just being straight psychological. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I I thought that's where it veered into comic book territory for me because, mm. like, I love a good spy movie and I love the aspect of Black Widow being psychologically taught in this way and then coming to terms with breaking away from that and defecting and like the whole red in her ledger and and it, like that aspect is really cool and interesting and then when you make it like we sprayed a gas on them and now they do everything we say and like it's like okay co this is a comic book plot line not that it's like bad but it's not the spy thriller situation that i like wanted from this movie yeah so yeah i mean i don't know mercedes or vivian like coming at it from a not super comic booky perspective like what you thought about that yeah, when when they first introduced the dust thing, it kind of took me a moment to realize like what happened because it is very theatrical and you know it's not something out of your stereotypical like 
spy. And isn't there one movie with the fucking guy? I don't even like, I already feel myself like not wanting to say it because I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but I think it's, <laughs> one of them and they say like the the trigger words and then he's kind of oh that's um, bucky yeah winter exactly. soldier exactly okay. yeah it's winter soldier yeah, yeah. so like uh, something like that i guess is more easy for me to have a, a grasp on um but but like sarah said and in, in coming into it especially not as like a someone who follows comic book comic books the lore of it or previous movies i had to remember okay this is probably something that they touched on you know in fucking issue whatever um so i it wasn't my favorite thing i don't also like in the end how she had to go the villain into like punching her in the face because she had the fucking pheromone thingy i was like girl I just like hit your head on a desk don't give him that power like girl boss it punch yourself in the face um so i was just like yeah yeah it was hard for me to follow and kind of see as like a, a legit part of the plot because it just felt a bit silly but again um it's okay it's a comic book kind of thing so maybe i'm wrong there but who knows yeah i was cracking up when the villain's superpower ended up being his musk (laughs) not (laughs) the villain when when she was like i'm severing the nerve i really laughed out loud i was like girl no like (laughs) right i was like what are no how did we get here? Uh, Vivian, what about Does that mean she can't smell ever? No. Oh, I- yeah, speaking of that not being like a, I guess, a effective or powerful moment like in the movie with the, I guess, dust or pheromones. Like, I I don't feel like I should comment on this because I missed that part of the movie. I just remember the red dust. So that's on <laughs> me. <laughs> where were <laughs> didn't know they were related. You didn't, didn't know they were. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was too busy laughing at the fact that none of it made sense to me like uh, in the first half. So I'm just gonna skip this part. <laughs> okay, uh, Nick, what about you? Viv saw the, the dust and she's like, I can go get a snack now. <laughs> <laughs> I can step away. Uh, I I mean, it felt silly to me, but it, it also didn't really bother me. I've come to expect uh, stuff that is that kind of silly from Marvel movies. Mm. I mean, okay. Ant Man, you know. Mm. Just yeah. Ant-Man. I, yeah. Yeah, Ant-Man is a thing in this universe, so mm-hmm. so nothing is really outside the realm of possibility. Yeah. Yeah, there's no real science here. <laughs> no. We left that out the door. Uh, Chase, what about you? What do you think? Yeah, once you introduce but, Doctor Strange, it's all magic. Uh, So, and this is going to go back to like my biggest critique of the film. Mm. My biggest issue with the whole pheromone thing, well, not the pheromone, the uh, dust thing, is uh, how it is tied into a certain villain that I had expectations for. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We don't need to, I I know we're trying to like walk around the spoilers a little bit, but you know, I was very, very disappointed by the lack of agency of this certain character um, Mm -hmm. that has a lot of agency in the comics. uh, Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that, that's my opinion. Like as soon as they tied that together, I was just like, oh man, nah. Oh, okay. Throws that out the window for me because the theme because i do like the theme of like this family acting on their own free will against you know this guy who's trying to oppress everybody um but you know it just didn't work for me okay i don't think they executed it okay um well i'm gonna give my final thoughts we're gonna do ratings and after the ratings we're gonna do a little bit of a spoiler discussion um after that um okay so for me with this movie um, I feel like that it's just fine. Um, I don't think it's particularly great. I don't think it's mm. really, you know, like something like when you compare it to the other Marvel movies, I don't think it's top tier. Um, I don't think it's particularly bottom tier. I just think it's kind of middle of the road. I think it's just fine. Um, you know, as far as expectations with this movie coming into it, um, I see a lot of people, you know, it's, it's online. So you're going to have, you know, re- you know, reactions that veer from extreme to, you know, uh, to just there's no middle ground. It's all just extreme opinion. So it's either the worst thing ever, or it's the best thing ever, or you know what I mean. There's very few just people just say it's just fine. Um, and I think you know, one, the action is right wing uh, Twitter. It's like get out of my woke. Stop making my woke. If you go to like, if you go far right enough. Yeah, I mean, so it, true. Um, and so I mean, things that work about this movie. I think the action is very good. Um, I think some of the sequences are a little kind of, you know, overly skeptical. And then, it, you know, some of the, you know, action stuff they do do, 
Um, I think, you know, it's just kind of like said, that Fast and Furious level action where you see people in cars. Maybe it's because I just, you know, watched Fast and Furious 9 just recently and you see people explode in cars and then they flip eight, t- eight times and they just get out the car perfectly fine with a little bit of a scratch and go like, oh, that was, oh, wow. What do you mean? I did that last week. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, they just kind of I mean, just roll out. Credit, yeah. for credits too, they actually show that they have like bruises and cuts on them. I'm like, mm. that's not. Yeah. I mean, so it's a little bit yeah. more, yeah, in, in a, in a, in a universe where you have an Ant-Man, it's more realistic than Fast and the Furious. Wow, that's incredible. Um, <laughs> uh, but so you know, you have moments oh my like God. that. Uh, but you, I mean, you have moments like that. But I think Florence Pugh. I mean, as, as we've been talking about, it, and from what I gather from other people, I mean, she clearly, for a lot of people, is the standout in this movie. And I, I agree. She, she absolutely steals the show. And if she's going to be involved in other future Marvel stuff. Um, I think that's a great decision because she is very good and she is very talented. Um, I think as far as doing the Russian accent, I think she kind of maybe does the best out of everybody because she just has more of a deeper kind of huskier voice. So she just sounds kind of a lot better than doing it. And she has a lot of good you know, moments with Scarlett Johansson, funny moments, um, you know, when she's discussing her poses and, you know what I mean, and, and, and fights and things like that, I think is are good moments and funny moments. Um, and her story is it's really more her story, you know, because it's about this woman who, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, is waking up and it finally gets to live her life, you know what I mean, the way she kind of wants to live it after all these years. She's like, I've never bought clothes for myself, you know what I mean? I'm, you know what I mean? She's an adult woman who's never experienced that. So that was kind of something that I felt was really good. And it's just, you know, it's a shame because it's like, well, this movie's Black Widow. This movie isn't, you know, about the Florence Pugh character. Um, when it comes to the villains, uh, Ray Winstone, um, he's referenced a lot, but he's barely seen. Um, he's seen a little bit at the beginning and then, you know, at the end, but he's just mostly just kind of references this ominous figure. And then when he kind of comes on, it's, it's kind of disappointing. And then you have Taskmaster, um, who, you know, if anybody knows Taskmaster and what he can do is that he can mimic other people's abilities and you only get a little taste of that. And, you know, thinking about, you know, like, especially seeing him, I just recently saw him in the Spider-Man game. Um, for for the PS4 and you know he can mimic other character you know people's abilities so seeing the character you see it do a little bit of that you see the bow and arrow so that's Hawkeye you see the character throw the shield so it's Captain America does a little shield tricks like Captain America like kicks the shield and puts it on the arm um, you see the, you know Taskmaster ignite claws so that's like Black Panther but you don't ever really get to see a lot of it in, in, in a good amount of burst you know what I mean as far as action scenes go we really get to see taskmaster move like black panther or move like hawkeye or move like captain america and i think that was a missed opportunity because you really could have had black widow really use her mind and really you know be a good you know Mm. you know really strategy of going like i'm going against a person who knows all my moves and then all the addition of all these other people and what what can i do and what can i battle and really get a chance to really see how smart Black Widow is as a person with strategy and strategizing and everything like that. And I think that was a big missed opportunity. Um, and I, I kind of wanted to be a little bit more grounded than what it was. I mean, the kind of action scene at the end and it's like, okay, we got to blow stuff up like a lot of these kind of Marvel things do. And I was kind of a little disappointed by that. Um, so, you know, for you me... You got to get the superhero shot, though. Yeah, Her you know, you got to get the, the building. superhero that was, that stuff. Was um but i just was like uh i i just don't know about that and and to sarah's point i agree i think they should have did more with the widows seeing the widows seeing their training i think that would have been way more interesting Mm. um but for me i'm i'm gonna give it a a six and a half out of ten for me which is fine um sadie's um yeah, as someone who, again, came into it with kind of no expectations, um, I will say the beginning really does do a good job of hooking you in, whether you know Marvel a lot or not, um, because it's very action-driven. You kind of see this duality of what um, of what Black Widow is doing, and then you see Florence coming in, and, and there's this kind of back and forth going on, which I think is so cool, and you want to know more. And then it hits, it's a lull kind of in the middle where that's where I feel like it's really starting to, they're trying to fit all these things in and, and that's where it kind of gets convoluted for me. Um, I, I will say though, that even though I was kind of knocking the family dynamic earlier and, and how um, kind of left out of left field it felt for me, I did really like the, um, the sister dynamic that uh, 
Florence and ScarJo picked up like early on to the movie, like when they're doing the car chase and then um, uh, ScarJo's driving and Florence is kind of ragging on her a bit. And she's like, oh my God, shut up. Like, I just, I thought they had that chemistry there and it was enjoyable for me to watch. And that's how I knew they were not um, that having chemistry. some. <laughs> it was sister chemistry, not anything else. <laughs> Um, but you never know. <laughs> it's the bad to know. It was that, that part trouble. was cute. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, kind of. I, I felt like everything along the line unraveled a bit for me, and they did try to give answers to things, but I felt like it was a bit sloppy. So I, I think I'm gonna give it a a five point five out of ten. The point five being for Florence Pugh's double ponytail. Mm. Oh, such a look. I loved it. I wore that all the time when I was a kid. Like, <laughs> my mom did my hair like that all the time. <laughs> mm. uh, Chase? Uh, oh, I'll begin. Um, to go back to Florence, though, because she is the highlight of this film. Um, and it is kind of her origin story. So let me, let me, let me walk that one line I had back about, uh, like, this movie didn't need to happen. Because mm. it at least gave her... A proper introduction to the uh to the universe and you know kind of tied her into the rest of it um but as a story it's 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 i saw somebody tweet saying that the script was written in 11 days and it sure does feel like it like it, it could have used yeah. like a couple more drafts mm. Maybe That's a not just writer. a meme it was really written in 11 days yeah unfortunately Damn. that seems to be the case yeah, that Tyler Perry work ethic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, wait, so no, there's... wait, no, wait. There no, was like triple the time that Tyler Perry did. Never mind. Because <laughs> there's like, as you were saying, Mercedes, there is a checklist that you could see them just like crossing off one by one. Um, we have to get her family sort of situation covered. All right, cool. We got her uh, mom situation covered, the little reveal, whether or not um, her mom loved her or not. We'll see. We'll see um but it was very much so just a checklist film um and for that it is a five it didn't really do too much for me outside of uh the uh the skyscraper uh, the skyscraper falling down and scar joe doing the little pose that florence is making fun of um very angry avatar yeah. like, okay period it was good yeah. <laughs> but you know if you're looking for just a generic action film you know this is for you if you're looking for some more uh, thought provoking or whatever, you're not going to find it here. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick? Um, so thinking about this and like where I, where I put it in the tiers of like Marvel Cinematic Universe, there are way worse Marvel movies than this. Like I'd put this over something like Thor The Dark World any day. Mm -hmm. Worst movie. <laughs> yeah the absolute worst movie but even then the dark world isn't even that bad like there's nothing in that movie that i would say is outright and i don't even think that here uh okay. everything it's uh it's fine it does a good job of uh tying up the uh black natasha's story and then setting up uh yelena uh, florence Pugh's character to take over she is easily the best thing about this movie and i really dug the performances from harbor and Ra and uh rachel weiss even though david harbor is just doing uh doing a russian david harbor <laughs> yeah. uh, the action scenes i thought were were okay there it's nothing on the level of civil war or even uh uh, uh winter soldier but I thought it was uh, well done enough. Um, Taskmaster, I was a little let down with the reveal, but thematically it makes sense within this movie. And without giving away spoilers, there is room for that character to return in the future. Is there though? Yeah. Is there? Possible. They'll bring. They'll find a way. Okay. We'll talk about it. The mouse finds a way. <laughs> so true. <laughs> but yeah i'd say for me this is probably a, a six out of ten marvel movie it's not it's not bad there's way worse for just as in my tier of marvel i'd say it's a six out of ten but just as a movie it's a perfectly fine generic action movie and i like putting those on on a sunday morning when i'm hungover <laughs> okay. 
So for that, it's probably closer to a 7 out of 10 for me. Okay. Uh, Viv? Um, I think just echoing on, echoing on what everyone else said, I think this movie needed to exist for Florence Pugh's sake and Yelena's mm-hmm. character um, and, and introduce her into the Marvel Universe and further that storyline. It is rather unfortunate that, like, I guess, like, for marketing sense, for marketing sakes, it does make sense to market it as Black Widow, but it is unfortunate that people going into the movie expecting it to be more focused on ScarJo are redirected to Florence Pugh. That being said, her performance was amazing. 10 out of 10. Sorry, ScarJo, girly. Loved your hair, though. Um, <laughs> the blonde, I will say that the blonde, not so much. The eyebrows were dyed a little bit too light. I was not the feeling blonde. It. What, why is she ripping off my look, number one? <laughs> right? Second of all, no. But she didn't even have brunette, she didn't have brown eyebrows. She had like blonde eyebrows that were dyed way too light. It wasn't giving. Um, <laughs> unlike Mercedes, though, I did not, the beginning did not make sense to me. The whole like, their introduction to the family thing, I could not understand. Um, I was like, who are these two kids? Like, why are they, why is her hair fucking blue? Um, <laughs> it did not make sense. Like, and like the other girl, like I guess I was Florence Pugh. I it's like <laughs> not Vivian I guess, guessing. I was, so <laughs> guessing Vivian. I, was, I was so confused. I guess that was her as a child. I was like, okay, like who are these two kids? I make that make sense. Like why are they suddenly like why are they suddenly what's that word like down? Like why are they passed out all of a sudden? I, it didn't make sense to me. Um, so that was confusing. Um, I didn't like that part. But as like their chemistry started to build, like I I did enjoy the like. Sibling chemistry between the two of them <laughs> um, and the family dynamics that were um, brought in by David Harbour and like Rachel Weisz. Um, that felt really genuine, um, despite the script being written well, allegedly 11 days or actually 11 days. I, I love that, that dynamic. Um, I, um, I'm also a sucker for cinematography. So I will say the red room was beautiful, like the scenes. Um, like Scar Joe's final showdown, that room was like absolutely gorgeous. I could not focus on anything except for the lighting and how golden it was. Um, the choreography between like all the widows that was that was well, sick. I like yeah, that, that was really well cool. choreographed. It was beautiful. <laughs> um, and I, I, I felt like it ended like a little bit. It cut, it cut off very abruptly. I expected more from the ending. Um, mm. I didn't expect them all to you know not. Without spoiling much, it ended on a field. And then it's just a shot of ScarJo, and I was like, oh, that's it? Where is yeah. she going to go now? Where is where's she going to go? Um, yeah. so <laughs> to the grave. Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 She's like, I guess. Long, <laughs> She's like, my time is now. Time to like dig my own grave. Um, <laughs> but yeah, acting-wise, like it was a 10 out of 10 amongst everyone. Um, cinematography, also amazing. Um, but it is very generic. Um, the tropes were all there. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, even the plots were still like, it was kind of, it was expected because it's Marvel. Um, and you can't really, like as much as you want to provide people with plot twists, like people kind of already expect them. So for all of that, I'm, I am going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Okay. Uh, Sarah? Um, well, I won't rehash a lot of the stuff that I think has already been said, but I mean, the big point for me was they really threw out a Velveeta script and cast caviar actors, and that shows through like so much, as we've said. Um, I mean, they literally had my man OT, and all he did was like buy planes. That was weird. But <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I, I think that, yeah, again. Florence Pugh really elevated it. David Harbour, Rachel Weisz. My favorite part, unlike Vivian, was the beginning. I thought the beginning was super interesting. It set up a lot of mystery. You knew just enough of what was going on, unless you were Vivian, to, like, be interested. (laughs) Um, And, like, I wished that would have continued through the rest of the film. It lost me in the second half. Um, But I, like, again, when I think of top-tier Marvel movies, like Iron Man, the original Avengers... Thor 3, um, and then when I think of, like, bottom tier, obviously, it's Thor 2, and frankly, Thor, not a good movie, or, like, Ultron, like, those are movies I don't even want to watch again, because I, like, literally got so bored halfway through that I didn't even finish some of them, Mm. and this movie is, like, 
I might even watch it again if I was at someone's house and they wanted to see it just to re-look at everything now that I know how it all turned out and like having more understanding. So for that, I think I would give it a six. Like I'm not going to actively rewatch it, but if it's there, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a solid action movie. The actors were great. The script sucked, but it's Marvel. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. This is probably going to be a save for when I do like my entire MCU watch. And like by the time the next Avengers movie comes around. Hmm. All right. Um, so to you, oh, good. Do you think this would have hit differently if it was if it came out right after Civil War? Oh, wow. yes. I mean, we talked about that like a thousand percent. Would have, yes, if it came out between um, even Infinity War and Endgame, if you wanted mm. to like set up threads for Yelena to appear in that movie, then it, I think mm. it would have worked a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, well, we spoil now. Uh yeah. Uh I I feel spoil like that motherfucker. Loki, I feel like we did spoil. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm really bad for that. We, I know I was like Mercedes like, and I are minutes. definitely spoiling. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I, I, I mean like that spoiler it wasn't like it wasn't the end of the world. <laughs> I mean it's also a shot that's in the trailer. What? The 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 musk? No, the, the musk. no the like <laughs> Star Joe standing in a field. That's the field. Uh, it didn't uh, okay. in a field. The blonde Marvel Bob is a spoiler. Loves a field. Yeah, that's a spoiler. No, blonde Bob is not <laughs> well, a spoiler yeah, if yeah, you watch Bo- the other yeah, movies. Blonde Bob is a spoiler <laughs> for a movie that came out like four years ago. Yeah, yeah it's just blonde <laughs> Bob's <laughs> later. We're like, oh fuck, she's blonde now? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. That's a choice. <laughs> you went, it's, it's bleach blonde depression. It's also, a celebrity <laughs> thing. They all dye their hair bleach blonde when they're getting depressed. Too. It's yeah. another, yeah, I wanted to say, it's and, another oh God, not important thing. When she was looking at the box dye, I'm like, there ain't no damn way she's going to get her right? hair that blonde with one thing of box dye. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, Marvel, yeah, yeah, do do some that research. That come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Brassy. Not brassy at all. And homegirl no. expects me to believe. No. Yeah, I was like, that's that's fake. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was so, out here with serious hair critiques. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's oh, it's very much needed. I, I think no, no other reviewer is doing that. I don't think so. That's very much needed. We're bringing the unique perspective. This is why yeah, you guys have us on. <laughs> How was their hair? What did they wear? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. So there is a you know mid credit scene, uh, well at post credit scene I should say, uh, with this film, and it only makes sense if you've seen the Disney Plus show. So I don't know, like Mercedes and Vivian Parton going like, well, who the fuck is this person coming up next to Florence Pugh? Uh, but if you watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier, like Seinfeld, yeah. Um, so at the yeah, end, that's just no, it's it's uh, Julia yeah, Louis uh, Dreyfus. Yeah, the yeah the lady from veep she fell on the hard times after she left office <laughs> honestly yeah. she was giving selena meyer so <laughs> yeah so uh so julie Louis dreyfus who plays a character called uh the baroness um in falcon uh, and falcon contessa valentina allegra de fontaine yeah just call her val <laughs> well don't actually call her val just like do it in your head yeah. <laughs> next um, time we hang out i will Keep that in mind. Yeah, we don't want to find her. Um, so at the end, so she shows up, you know, while Florence Pugh is at the grave of uh, Scarlett Johansson, Black Widow character. And um, so She's the whole. rude as fuck. <laughs> I mean, pretty, I mean, pretty much. Uh, but, um, you know, well, she is in the Midwest. I understand. Uh, I kind of want to leave the Midwest myself. Uh, so, you know what I mean? It's just, I'm, I'm kind of tired of it. But, uh, so the, the whole thing is with her is they're setting up her to be a part of the Hawkeye TV series for Disney plus, um, and further down the line. So to basically give something to basically, it basically sets up the Hawkeye TV series to get you kind of excited for that. It's like, Hey, if you really like this character, you know, that's what Marvel does. They pimp out their products. It's like, you know, you're going to see her again and this other thing. So what did you all think about that post credit stinger? Yep. Mickey, Mickey doing his job and say, get out of that corner. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that, was <scary>. wow. <laughs> that was too real. I know. I'm like, wow. Oh, um, 
Every time I... you do that impression, I could see the South Park Mickey. <laughs> 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 I like don't really care about Hawkeye as much ever since he got a weird family and lives on a farm with them. I'm just gonna be real. Like, what was that? And so I, I, I didn't care too. But <laughs> the only thing that saved it was uh, Linda Cardellini. Yeah, I that's I was true. A fan of Freaks and Geeks. Mm -hmm. I l I'm just a fan of Linda Cardellini. I mean, if anyone has watched the um, the show with her and Christina Applegate. Oh, on that Netflix, that that's shit's fire. Mean. Let's watch that. <laughs> Let's <laughs> do that. So her into Marvel. I also don't know how they got Julia Louis Dreyfus into Marvel, but um, I mean, I'm excited that we'll see. I'm excited that it was confirmation that like Florence Pugh will not be gone because I was worried mm -hmm. she might be a one and done, which they throw in some of the movies sometimes. So that was exciting for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. seeing that scene, Vivian actually let me know there's a post credit scene, um, so I'm glad I stuck around for that. Um, but it, it does kind of give you something. The post credit scene, but not anything else in the whole movie. <laughs> That's the one She's thing like, about Marvel, the post credit yeah. scene. <laughs> the post credit scene, I'm like, thank you, Viv. Um, but as um, someone who doesn't know a lot, it does give you something to look forward to. Um, everyone, as everyone said, Florence was the highlight of this movie. So, um, and I think it kind of would be a disservice if we were like, oh, okay, we can't really expect anything else from her going forward. It's like a kind of solidified, like, yeah, she's going to be back in some capacity. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe they played that to their advantage. Maybe they knew, okay, we're kind of doing Black Widow dirty here, but like, if we're going to make this girl the focus, let's make her the focus and let's get people so amped up for her that we put this post credit scene and whatever people are going to be looking forward to that even if we kind of like half-ass this movie so i i saw that and i was like oh that's cool and she got her dog so that made me feel happy because she was talking about getting a dog and i was like oh fuck she got a dog um so yeah, i thought it was great <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was so cute. I, I would like him. to say, um, also, Sadie's review was that she hated the dog and she hated the pigs. Um, they were <laughs> a big source of barking. We were upset. We needed to calm down. So she is going to give it a zero out of 10. Um, but that's biased. Sadie fell asleep during the movie. She, yeah, Sadie she did. Like, I give up. Yeah, but, she woke up yeah, only for the review is like a, a two out of 10. She liked all the everything in it, but once those dogs, the pig showed up. No, yeah, it was no. Really what was up least, with the pig? Did she at least enjoy when the pig was dying? No, <laughs> she was two. Okay. Can't win. <laughs> oh, I mean, my, I mean, my dog's kind of an asshole, so she was mm. probably like, yes. Yeah. Die. Die. Bacon. <laughs> mm. oh. I wonder how they are going to position Florence in the future, though, because mm. obviously it's not black and white um like series like there a lot of characters are in the gray so but if she's gonna be positioned like with the mission to kill hawkeye is that gonna make her like a villain are they gonna villainize her in like his own series and i if so like how is the are the fans gonna react to that well if there are any hawkeye well, fans i don't i don't know uh, Val was revealed in Falcon oh, one and the Winter Soldier. She's kind of being played as a shadier version of Nick Fury. Uh, mm, okay. A shadier guy who's kind of like recruiting a bunch of different people for I guess her uh, new Avengers or I guess the Thunderbolts or what do you call them? The guys that are like more willing to act in the gray area because the first one we saw her recruit was uh, John Walker who is now a U.S. agent. And then Sadie's like Sadie's is looking like I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> USU, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was waiting for you to I was waiting for you to explain that to him, but uh, <laughs> just yeah. went silent. I was just. Like, I mean, but I appreciate yeah, you, you know what that background info was needed. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate Sadie's. Or she's smiling like she knows, and she's nodding, but she doesn't know what yeah, the fuck. Smile and like, nod. It's yeah. my trick. I've gone through so many interviews that way, you guys. He he Smile was the for for reference. He's the guy in twenty um twenty two Jump, Jump Street who has the tattoo on his arm. Um, no, okay, still wow. I really thought that would get it for you guys. <laughs> no, God, you no. haven't watched my favorite film of all time, Twenty Two oh, Jump Street. Have. I've seen I, it I'm, once. I've seen it once. So I don't remember. Girl, I don't remember them anymore. girl yeah, there's exactly. one man. It's a key point. Whatever. <laughs> we'll get to this later. You haven't seen The Princess Bride, so I don't know why I have any hope with you all. 
I know. Me and Viv will leave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know what? Please, for context, for context, I never watched do. Spongebob as a kid. So. I was just about to bring that up. I'm happy to <laughs> yeah, That's a very valid point. I, at least, I saw Spongebob, so. Oh. Yeah, I never watched it either, so I never watched Spongebob either. It's okay. Really? No. Whoa. I never watched it. Josh. Hell yeah. Spongebob so review really. when? Spongebob review when? Um, that's a lot of, uh, <laughs> uh, boy. Spongebob. That's a lot of, that's too many episodes. Um, it still I, holds up to the first. Uh, yeah, the Spongebob movie is still great. Uh, and the movie is very good. Even if you watch that, nothing else. I'm... The first three seasons and the movie. Yeah. That's yeah. prime Spongebob. I, that's, I think that's what I heard when I asked people. That's where they we say, got all the memes. That's, that's what I hear from people who have seen Spongebob. They say like, yeah, usually the first few seasons are pretty good. The movie's pretty good. Um, I might one day, uh, uh, meaning never, I don't know, maybe, uh, but, uh, maybe, maybe something. <laughs> Chase, uh, Chase, guy. you gotta work on this. This guy. Get on it. Well, look, look, Josh, I'll watch Harry Potter if you watch Spongebob, all right? Well, what you, you speaking of Harry Potter, watch Harry Potter. <laughs> is that a deal? I mean, you just, I mean, we will, will, your, will your mother let you watch Harry Potter? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh, oh I'm, I'm hiding. I'm I, leaving. I was ten. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying that's the reason you didn't watch it, right? Because your mother told you not to watch it, right? I was ten. So was she'll let you 10. so she'll I, let you watch it now? Close the door now. I'm good now. <laughs> oh, okay. I, mean, I, don't I can think close like the door, watch the headphones, I'm fine now. <laughs> Okay. I don't know what Harry Potter you were watching, Chase, when you were 10 years old, but Harry Potter was not 18 plus, babes. Hey, if you grew up so, in a religious household, you might as well have been watching. Uh, yeah, no. I think I think that honestly would have been more acceptable at the time. Oh um, my God. <laughs> at least it's not a direct yeah. conduit to the Dark Lord. That's what she's saying, you know? I mean, sure like, she's chilled, out, by, she's chilled out somewhere. now, but like... Mm. You know, back then it was rough. I couldn't even watch Hey Arnold sometimes because she was like, "Ooh, that's bullying." <laughs> hey, if it makes you feel better, my mom wouldn't let me watch Hercules. Really? Oh so, yeah. For what? Um, because they sang a song called "The Gospel Truth," and that made her mad because it was about <laughs> fake gods. So we won't go there. But yeah, well, she's yeah. better oh, now. Wait. Maybe oh, she has some good. I thought you were going to talk about the Kevin Sorbo show. Which, yeah. Yeah, good for her. <laughs> no, the Disney movie. Oh, the Disney. Oh, the Disney. Which movie. makes it worse, actually. It's actually worse, <laughs> arguably. Yeah. Um. So I. Uh, all right. Back to the stinger. Right. I, I almost forgot. Uh. Can't get my thoughts okay. on that. Uh, back to our black. We got world. off topic. Oh, uh, I got a prediction. I got a prediction. So right. it's probably gonna happen because we all love Yelena. She's not gonna be a villain. There's gonna be a. There's gonna be an episode where they fight very quickly. They're gonna have to face another big bad because that's usually how these 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 stories go. Mm -hmm. um, and then Yelena's gonna be kind of like a. Uh, it's gonna be the the Black Widow Hawkeye team up uh, that yeah. we haven't seen in a while. He's so gonna do. My, I'd love that. My, my bold prediction. Yeah, he's yeah, gonna do the. Forward. He's gonna do to her <laughs> what he did to Black. But Widow. wait, no, even better. We're gonna get it with his daughter. We're gonna get it with his daughter and Yelena, because fuck Hawkeye. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Honestly, one of the big things about okay, this movie that had me invested was the amount of women. I was like, <laughs> as soon as I saw them all, so I'm like, if it is his daughter and her, count me in. Yeah. Um, also, a question to people who know more about this than me: Is she like something in other comics? Like Yelena? Is she like? Yes. Does she have like an official hero yes. name? Like yes. For, yes. For, for a while in the comics, she was the official Black Widow. I think it was oh. like around the 80s when uh, they retired the character in Natasha Roman. Okay, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. For context, Mercedes, a lot of the um, characters like cycle out of the name, so that's why there's like Miles Morales being Spider-Man. Right. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think you already know that. That took that. me a while to understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. At first, yeah. but yeah. I get Sam it now. Wilson and both Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes were both Captain America. Point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, and the other big thing, so Just to make it easy to understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other big thing with this is the whole Taskmaster reveal. So in the movie, um, Taskmaster mm -hmm. gets revealed to be it was Ray Winstone's daughter. I know a lot of people have a big issue with that. Like I, I saw a lot of people kind of complain about that, talk about you know Taskmaster's character and how wasted it was. So 
Um, I'm going to go to you, Chase, since you had a big issue with it. And just, you know, what are your big kind of issues with Taskmaster in the film? So my first issue, right, was that reveal. I like offhandedly thought of that as a joke as soon as like Natasha had talked about the dead daughter. Like, obviously, the daughter's not dead. Like, you know, we didn't get a body. We're going to probably see her be revealed sooner or later. Uh, but then to have it be revealed as Taskmaster, Taskmaster, mm-hmm. and then what really killed it for me was um, just how that she was under control too. It wasn't her acting on her own free will. She could have been a perfect foil for mm-hmm. Yelena and uh, Black Widow if she had been acting on her own free will. Yeah. Um, because like the whole thing with um, Taskmaster is that the character is supposed to be a mercenary. Um, does whatever for paycheck, doesn't really care about what whoever they have to uh, take down or kill, whatever. Um, but also like the ability of them memorying people um, and not having their own actual identity in terms of fighting, aside from memorying people, I thought that could have been a good like play on the theme of free will and whatnot. Mm. Uh, but you know, also. I also feel like she she has like no lines. <laughs> she didn't need she didn't need to be under control. She had such a good motive anyway of mm-hmm. this girl trying to blow her up and kill her dad. Like there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I mean yeah. like the original name Tony Masters, she could have just put an eye on the name. I would have been mm-hmm. cool with giving her like the full like Tony Masters backstory so I can yeah. see her fight Spider-Man. Yeah, uh, the that's what I really want to see. Yeah, the MCU, <laughs> they're not above uh, gender swapping people. They, they, yeah. they turned uh, the ancient one to a woman. They turned uh, uh, the Flag Smashers, the leader of them, into uh, into a woman. Carly Morgenthau. You could have easily done that with uh, with a uh, Taskmaster. Yeah. But I, at the time of the reveal, I didn't really have a problem with it because the because Ray Winstone's whole thing was like mind control and taking away people's free will but i also agree with you i think it would have been more interesting if that character had agency and was more or less operating under her own free will instead of just being mind control especially because because this movie it's kind of thematically it's it's um it's a black it's natasha's past coming back to haunt her even down to like having to fight a mirror of her friend Mm-hmm. Her supposed new family. Yeah, it's yeah. A, I think it's with the the Taskmaster thing, it did feel like lackluster, um, but it it did make sense. I mean, however, other many avenues they could have gone with it. That is just showing that Drakov really is non discriminatory in who mm-hmm. he's, you know, mm-hmm. taking control of. Not even his own daughter. Like it, it doesn't matter. So, I, I yeah, and, and that's in that way, it did make sense to me but definitely in hearing now how you guys think of it and what other things they could have done uh could have been even more interesting that's yeah. a cool perspective though like thinking about it that way of his him making him more of a villain through that mm. character yeah just really driving mm. the point home that it's like my daughter a weapon like okay mm. that's <laughs> villain shit for sure <laughs> yeah. yeah his ultimate and, weapon all right yeah. i'll give you that and, yeah and there, is, and there is still room for that character to come back at some point whether it be is there as a merc- whether it be as a mercenary cuz cuz you see Val and uh, Yelena clearly working together. Mm. So there's room for like maybe she recruits a taskmaster as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um I hope so. I, I think you know with the character whole the reveal um you could have done something with it like you know people been saying because you could have had it you know be it being a character who's a literal embodiment of Black Widow fighting her demons, you know. So I think that would have been very good, and especially mm-hmm. when you learn of what happened and what she had to do in order to get rid of her old life and in order to start this new one and all the kind of the bad things you know she had to do. And the movie also reminds you, kind of like similar, you know, uh, similar uh, to the Winter Soldier, where it's like, oh, that's right, this guy did a lot of bad stuff and he killed a lot of people. You know what I mean? And, you know, he's kind of haunted by that, like, every day almost. And it's the same with Black Widow, where she's trying to, you know, she tried to really make up for it and do good and join S.H.I.E.L.D. Then, oopsie, oh, S.H.I.E.L.D. turns out to be infested by Nazis. Oh, okay, well, that's really bad. So, kind of, it was kind of a wash you joining S.H.I.E.L.D. And then, you know, she did really good joining the Avengers and she did sacrifice her life. 
Um, and then, you know, it, it really was a good point when Floyd's Pew pointed out that, I mean, me and you are the same. The only difference is that you're just on TV and then little girls look up to you without knowing, you know, fully, you know what I mean, your, your past and what you did. So I thought that was I thought that was really good. And again, I mean, this movie's got some really good nuggets in here of some really good stuff. It's just mm-hmm. that I, I like like Sadie's was saying, I, I just wasn't, you know, very thought out very well. Um, so it, was, it just was kind of it was it was sad to see that, you know, you could have made this really, really much better than it was. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it, I think it was a great discussion on Black Widow uh, and everything about it. Um, and just the movie in itself. And I'm glad Sadie's and Vivian and Sarah joined us uh, for the discussion. Enjoyed having them on. Um, so uh, could you guys uh, promote your stuff and the you. links and all that other stuff like that? Oh, my God. Okay, I'll go first because I'm a, I'm a hoe for this kind of stuff. Um, I stream on Twitch primarily is what I'm doing. So you can follow me at Baby Girl Sadie's. Um, I try every Sunday and Wednesday, but actually I'm getting my second dose tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. You probably yeah, won't hear from me for like a that. week. Thank you. <laughs> good um, I'm on Twitter and stuff. Again, very, very self-indulgent. I just tweet about myself. So if you want to. If you want to hear about that, you can follow me um, at Mercedes H I T. It's a One Direction um, <laughs> reference from my One Direction days. Uh, Instagram, Baby Girl Sadies as well, and uh, we have a Discord. Me and the me and the other stream queens, Viv and Sarah. So, I mean, you can find that somewhere. I don't know how I would plug that. I can't read the URL, but yeah. H T T P. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Vivian? Yeah. All right. Um, so you can also find me on Twitch. If you are, I mainly stream like GTA roleplay, as embarrassing as it is. I'm starting to revisit Sims 4 now, and I play Phasma with the Stream Queens actually every so often on Thursdays. I stream um, Mondays and Thursdays around 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Eastern. Mm. Um, so yeah, find me there. This is Vivian. All my other social media is probably linked on Twitch as well. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, and I am also on Twitch. Um, my username is sorry, not sorry. So first sorry is like normal and then S-A-R-I for the second one. Um, and I, again, I'm weirdly private. So that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, and I do, um, I also show up on the Stream Queen stuff when we do our horror co-op game um situations which are always a blast but on my channel i just streamed all of dragon age inquisition for the last six months we literally just finished it yesterday so um i might start in on mass effect legendary edition soon we'll see nice. time for my my garris romance phase chase <laughs> um and uh i usually stream on tuesdays and fridays um but i'm in pacific time so it tends to be a little later for some of y'all but yeah okay yeah because uh, I know there was like a big issue when I said like 8 p.m. Central Time, and then I, uh, Sadie's made me aware of like a whole discussion oh, of oh my time gosh. zones, <laughs> and it know. was very embarrassing. Yeah, uh, for so. us, time zones are hard to figure out. <laughs> yeah. And we struggle with numbers. Yeah, I'm still not, not our strong suit. Don't worry. Not our strong suit. Yeah. So, and he's only an hour away. I'm still, I'm still not used to it. I have to like <laughs> mentally clock it. Like, Wait, what time zones are y'all in? Uh, Eastern. Uh, and I'm in. Time. time. Yeah, <laughs> and, and so I'm in Central Time. So. Wait, are you serious? What time is it in oh, Japan? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a uh, almost noon. Oh my god, that's you insane! Know what? The sunlight now makes sense because like, <laughs> oh like, 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 like eight p.m., seven p.m. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> that's crazy. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, well, th- thank you, uh, Stream Queens, so much for joining us. Um, yeah, it's, it was a thank pleasure you for having, having us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having yeah, us. It was very fun. Yeah, it was a pleasure having you on. And hopefully, maybe Sadie's and her boyfriend will show up maybe a couple of weeks from now to do something. Hopefully, um, I'll talk to her about it. See if she's up for. Yeah. It. Yeah. So we get to see TB um, come on um, and his awesomeness and everything. So. Um, and they, you know, they, they're really cute on stream Love together. TV. Yeah. Uh, her and Sadie's and, uh, him and Sadie's are really cute together. Great couple, great Twitch couple, you know what I mean? To watch, you know, very 
aspirational Twitch couple goals. I'm surprised you know? I didn't hear his laugh. Are you saying Rocket <laughs> League? Yeah. There's nothing funny. There's nothing funny. It's very competitive. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, but hey, thank you, ladies. Uh, pleasure having you on. And for sure, I'd I'd love to invite you guys back again. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you for having Thank us. You so much. It was really fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Mm-hmm. Thank Great you. meeting everybody. Like, well, not face to face, but yeah. <laughs> Sarah's <laughs> icon here. Screen to screen. <laughs> My floating icon. You met Sadie. Yeah. That's yeah, what matters. Exactly. And her watch or bracelet. Yeah. <laughs> My <right>. arm. Yeah. <laughs> we met the doggo. That's what really counts. Exactly. Uh, thank you, Sadie. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so, much. so much. Thank you. Have a, gr- have a great, great night. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great one. Um, all right. So, people, uh, moving on from discussing Black Widow, uh, we're going to discuss um, The Forever Purge. Um, I'm the only person that saw the movie, uh, so I'll just do a quick review of that uh, since Chase and uh, Nick didn't get a chance to see it. Um, if you guys want, uh, you can clock me. Um, if you guys want, I just want to see. Um, let's see how fast I can do this review. I think, let's see if I can do it between five and eight minutes. All right. Um, so, okay. Right. Really, really, we, we clocking you? All right. Yeah, I just want to see. Let's see. Let's do a little experiment. Just see how Go fast I can do the reviews. And just show you all I how. Got, I got money on 10. 10? Okay. Um, okay. Right. Um, so. Right. 10 minutes. Uh, my money is over 12. Okay, so you started it already or no? All right, count down? Yeah. Yeah, it's going right now. Oh, it's going right now. Okay, so all right, so you have The Forever Purge, which is the fifth movie in the Purge series uh, coming after the first Purge, which was a prequel. And so you asked the question like, well, you know, in per- the last kind of uh, Purge movie that we saw, uh, Purge Election Year with Frank Grillo, we had it all about him protecting this politician who's all about ending the Purge. So at the beginning of this movie... It does say that the purge did end. So when that politician in election year became president for those eight years, um, she did eliminate the purge and there hasn't been a purge for the eight years. But when she got out of office, all the bad people that were previously there who instituted the purge basically just went like, OK, well, fuck what she was talking about. Uh, the purge is back on um, all, all the stuff, all the bad stuff like, like we, we, we started it all up again. Um, and, you know, business was booming when we were doing the purge. So we're going to do it again. Um, and so in this one, um, you have the purge night that does happen, but instead of it just ending on that one night where all crime is legal, everything from murder to, to robbery, um, it basically, you have these fringe group of people who go like, you know, instead of it ending on one one night, we're going to continue it forever, you know, and hence the forever purge. Um, in this, uh, cast, you have, um, mainly kind of Latino actors. That's kind of the primarily focus of this. These Purge movies have never been subtle in its social commentary about what it means, what it's talking about. I mean, the writers of these movies must just absolutely just, their foreheads must be sweating when they read the news and they look at Reddit, they go like, oh boy, crazy ass white people. I mean, it's just endless supply. <laughs> I mean, we could talk about this shit. Story. Oh, you know what I mean? Um, yes, they're, they're like Matthew McConaughey smoking, reading their phone every time <laughs> Fox News comes on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they oh, just must yeah. be just, just endless, that. endless sequels. Yeah, I mean, when they saw the the um, the insurrection on on January sixth, they were like, mm. "Oh boy, we got another one, boys." Right let's, down, right yeah, let's just 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 put the put the, turn the camera on, get the scripts ready, boys. We we got another one. Uh, because they just start up. So this one is very much about kind of that mentality. You have these people, uh, you know, like the people in the, ins- you know, insurrectionists, like these people, you know, you see online, very, you know, far right people who, you know, talk about starting a war, um, particularly, you know, race war, you know what I mean? Taking over the government um, and, you know, c- you know, kind of that kind of element. So you have very much of that going on in this film. And you do have Latino actors, um, so it's kind of that kind of mentality of, you know, you have Ana de uh, La, uh, La Regra, who's one of the main leads here. Uh, you also have Josh Lucas, um, who's uh, a farmer who her husband works for in the film. Um, Josh Lucas, he plays, you know, different a different type of racist that you see um, in the movie where he's the type of racist that goes like, well, you know, I don't have a problem with you people. I just wish you people would stay over there and we stay over here 
And, you know, you know, I don't understand you and you don't understand me. So let's just leave it at that and be done with it. But I'm not a racist. Though. I'm not a bad guy. You know what I mean? Uh, so segregationist. Yeah. Oh, you know, the, oh, the... <laughs> oh, so this is like, oh, so this is like Green Book as a. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much a separate but equal thinking uh, level mm. of, of, of racism as opposed to just the outward mm. racism mm. Uh, that you see in this film, which is just like, you know, kill all, you know, Latino people and we're going to take back our country and you've invaded and you've taken over. Um, and, you know, this, you know, different type of, you know, racial slurs thrown out here, you know what I mean? You know, like like brownies, which I don't think is a very effective racial slur all that much. I, I mean, they, they call, you know, the Latinos in the movie brownies. Um I, it just doesn't hit yeah, as I mean, hard. Even, as far as racial slurs go, I've heard worse. Yeah, it's it just I mean, like yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that 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 one ain't hitting. I'm sorry, as a, as a racial slur, girl, it's, just, it's not hitting. It's not. It's, it doesn't hit as hard as maybe something like blacky or something. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. It just doesn't. It doesn't really do it. I mean, you you guys should have should have better drafted something better up or something. I, I I don't know. That that one ain't doing it. Um, in this one, I think you know compared hey. to. Oh what? Never mind. Okay. Go You're um, on the clock. Keep going. Okay. Um, as compared to the other Purge movies, this one I think it's it's more faster paced. The action is just more continuous, um, mm. and it, because it's just a, it, it's more of a of a race. Not only because it's you know in, in most of the movies it's just about surviving the one night. Um, in this movie, it's all about they have to get to either you know they have to get to the border of, the, of Mexico because Mexico and Canada, when they hear about what America is doing, of like uh, the United States is doing, of just like hey, the forever purge is happening, where it's purge twenty four seven. They were like, okay, your country's so fucked up, we're gonna allow you to kind of come in here. We're gonna give you some you know uh, uh, you know pass to come in here for these hours to escape what's going on there. And uh, so it's, you know, again, kind of a social commentary. You have, you know, these people from, you know, all these different countries that you see, you know, these these refugees come over to America to leave the bad situations. So it's kind of, you know, a, a, a commentary on that. Um, so I thought that was a very interesting element, you know, and I like how the Purge movies constantly develop their themes, develop their social commentaries, you know, and, and more of these movies. Um, I think it's strong performances from the cast. I said Andy Larega uh, does a very good job. Josh Lucas does a very good job. You have a character who plays his sister named Susie um, uh, uh, Aberment that she does a very good job. Um, you have different Latino characters like uh, Alejandro Eddie, who I believe that is the guy who plays uh, her husband in the movie as well. And um, and I think you know that kind of pace kind of comes up, and and I think they all do a very solid job. Action wise, I think the action is very good. Um, it's it's on par with a lot of the Purge movies, and I think that the villain of the series, you know, conventional racist kind of bad white guy, nothing really too spectacular. But the the, the standoff at the end with the bad guy is 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 very good. Um, overall, um, I think if you are a fan of these Purge movies, I think you'll be a fan of this one, and especially where it leads off and where it kind of continues for more Purge movies, I think is very interesting. So. I, I give it a six out of ten for me. Uh, strong six, uh, light seven mm. out of ten. Um, How would you compare it to? I'd say some of the better ones, which has like, uh, uh, I'd say uh, Anarchy, the second Purge movie. It's one that I consider the best one. Uh, how would you say it compares to that? Um, so for me, Anarchy and Election Year are my two of my favorite Purge movies um i think you know that one like you know anarchy was right after the first purge movie like the very first purge movie that with ethan hawk um which the very first purge movie i wasn't really all that much of a fan of uh simply because in that movie yeah that, yeah, that was blumhouse like you get five dollars yeah i mean it was basically $5 just a make it look. It, it was basically just a you know home invasion movie basically about the purge about you know it kind of introduced you to purge um, in and do it, you know introducing you into the concept of the purge and everything but in anarchy it really took you on the night of the purge and what people do and frank grillo was mm -hmm. was really great at being this guy that really showed you you know okay well this is what happens on the purge it was more just a straight up kind of revenge movie um in that one um i still prefer that one i think that one's really great um i think election year is also really great and you know, one of the good elements about it is also you see kind of recurring characters that pop up in these movies. Um, like you have Michael K. Williams that showed up in two and three, and his character was kind of like 
like this Black Panther esque type character who's all about protecting you know these innocent people from the purge and everything. So you know and 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 helping the kind of innocent people and fighting against the people who were you know committing these violence. And then in the prequel, the the first purge, which was the prequel movie all about how the purge was instituted, was very much focused on black people, you know, black and brown people of how racist the purge is, you know, touching on, you know, things of like, hey, this is, you know, this is a thing specifically to just kill off, you know, population control, to kill off black people, to kill off brown people and, you know, the expectations of, you know, that and how, you know, they purposefully do the, you know, do these things and and, and kind of the racist motivations behind them. Um, and in this one, they kind of follow up on that. Um, so, you know, for me, I think, you know, this one, I think it, if I had to rank them person, I'd still put Anarchy first and then Election Year. And then I would maybe put the Forever Purge as the third one and then the first Purge and then the last one. Um, and then the one with Ethan Hawke, uh, the Purge, the, the first one, uh, if I had to rank all the movies mm. uh, personally. Um, and Very confusing when you have to talk about like the series as a whole is like the purge, the Ethan Hawke one, and then the first purge. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you have to, yeah, you have to, purge. yeah, um, you have to, yeah, you have to. Oh yeah, the not the not the first purge, not like the movie, the prequel. The I mean, the first purge as in the first of the movies, um, in in the series. Um, but you know, it, you know, I think you know this one. You know, it has good action in it. If you are a fan of these movies. I think you'll you'll very much enjoy it, and the character of you know Anna de uh, Allegra is you know is a good you know great female character. I think you know someone that you really do want to watch and and do, do you know she doesn't make dumb decisions all that much in the movie. Uh, she's very very much of an intelligent character, um, and it it kind of reminded that's, me a that, little that's bit. Cool to hear. I really that's cool. I really liked her in uh, Army of the Dead, even though she didn't really a whole lot to do. Yeah, and uh, it's cool to see that 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 she's like has a little more agents next role yeah um and it kind of, her character a little bit reminded me of someone like maybe like betty gilpin in the hunt um if you've ever seen that movie um a little bit kind of like that uh to a degree just as far as action wise a little bit um and and if anybody's ever seen that movie it's a great movie you know it's kind of similar to the purge in a way like very on the nose social commentary um, you know, action series, but I thought it was, I thought that movie was pretty good too. Um, so yeah, uh, any, any more, you know, kind of questions or, you know, about the movie or about Forever Purge or anything like that? Yeah. No? <laughs> I got no No? No? Okay. All right. Uh, what time was that? When did, I'll when get did to I, it when I get to it, I guess. Yeah. When did I give my rating for it? Oh, uh, 10 minutes, 47 seconds. Uh, that's when I gave my well, rating. You got your rating at like uh, eight minutes. Yeah, eight minutes. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, see, that's so how. Not five. Uh, I said <laughs> five. Not five. Closer to ten. You round that joint up. You owe no. me five dollars. <laughs> no, no. I used. To, I said five to ten. I said five to ten minutes. And then you guys were interrupting me, so you got to, you got you got also minus some time off of that. <laughs> We were asking questions that were relevant to like your review. your review. We helped you. We guided you. No, you you, you were interrupting me, trying to try to make me go over my time, uh, but I still finished it anyway because I'm yeah. the ghost. Were we interrupting him, or were we like asking relevant questions to? Them? You know, uh, both, uh, both. Could uh, could have saved those questions after I gave my rating. Could have saved those questions. Um, all right, so uh, moving on from discussing the Forever Purge, going to discuss uh, the Tomorrow War. Uh, who saw that again? Um, it, I think it was just me that saw Tomorrow War. Yeah, we all did. Yeah, I saw it too. Okay, so okay, so everybody saw the Tomorrow War. Okay, great. Um, so in Tomorrow War, um, you have Chris Pratt in this, starring in a big sci-fi action film. Um, I guess Amazon is taking notes from what Netflix is doing, of having these big bombastic action films and getting a lead actor and sticking them in it and marketing the hell out of it because I've been seeing commercials everywhere for this movie like anytime I'm on it Hulu or anytime yeah. I'm on anything I see commercials for this everywhere TikTok um, yeah I mean it's I mean they're marketing the hell out of this and the money that's put into this it looks they good in my fucking dreams Freddy Krueger came in with a poster for fucking Tomorrow War yeah, I mean, they just... you said who came in with the poster? Yeah, Freddy Krueger basically came into my nightmare uh. poster for Tomorrow War. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, they, they've been pimping the hell out of this. And, I mean, they've been putting a yeah. lot of money into this. I mean, when you watch the movie, you can tell 
a lot of money's been put into this. Uh, the, the alien designs look very, very good, I will say about that. That's one of the big compliments about this movie um, is the alien design and the creature designs. They all look very good. And they're all on screen for an extended amount of time. And, you know, I think they look pretty great. Um, so the whole premise of this movie is that they're, you know, while uh, Chris Pratt is at this party, um, biz, you know, this party and everybody's sitting around watching uh, uh, soccer, um, which, I mean, that's probably the most unbelievable thing in this fucking movie, just a whole American uh, <laughs> most party. Unbelievable part, like, like, like people in, like, the suburbs are watching soccer. Yeah, you know what hey, I mean. It's twenty. It's twenty twenty two. Who knows what can change? You know, <laughs> oh, soccer yeah. gets a big boom in the in the near future. Yeah, uh, maybe something. Yeah, I guess. Unless it's the World Cup, Americans don't give a shit about soccer. Yeah. Uh, so they're they're also, not even for the World Cup. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not even for like. To yeah. be honest here. Yeah. Um. So so you, they're sitting around watching the game. All of a sudden, you know. Portal opens, people come out of it and say like, hey, to all you people out mm-hmm. there, we need you. Um, we're 30 years in the future and we're fighting these alien creatures and we get our ass whooped uh, and we need your help. Uh, we need every available mm-hmm. body to come in. And you know when they cycle through all the former military and mil- current military from the, the past, they basically just after that, they go like, OK, every Joe Blow we're going to give you a gun and send you to the future and you're going to shoot some aliens. There's no fucking, you, you can't get out of it. I mean, they institute a <laughs> world like, draft. Like, it's like, Hey, you old and look. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? And it's specifically targeted to people who are 40 and up. That's what they say. Um, you know, that's who, you know, is, is, is going to the future doing this world draft. Um, and it's, it's Lottie Dottie, everybody. Um, you, uh, guy who's a farmer who only knows how to use, a. uh, uh a uh, pickaxe and 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 everything like that. You going, um, you guy who's who's you know a hundred pounds overweight and works at an office desk. You going, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you know, you I don't three that are just like hanging out on a podcast on Discord. Guess what? You going? Oh no, we're too young <laughs> to go. Yeah, we you know <laughs> we're we're too young to go. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, but oh, but oh, that's forgotten. Nick Nick is in the Navy, so he definitely would go. So his ass is going. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> his ass going. <laughs> you in the army too, man? You would have gone too. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, so, yeah, I'd been fucked too. But uh, well, I mean, there is a very uh, there's a there's a reason for the age. Uh, yeah, there there is a reason for that. Uh, yeah, they do a decent job. On, they do a decent job explaining that. Yeah. So. Um, and the issue is you might not even really make it to the future because as soon as you jump out the portal, you might just die right there because the portal opens up in the sky and you just free fall uh, right into, you know, just concrete. Um, and you They know, did say it was a malfunction. I will give them they, that pass. It was. They did <laughs> say that, but. But still. That shit. Yeah, just like free falling from skyscraper height, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Could have almost ended them, the like, whole movie didn't right there. Didn't even give them like parachutes or nothing. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you could at least gave they them. They would have given them like, something like in but, case of emergency. I mean, they barely taught them how to shoot them guns. They they didn't have time for the parachute training. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they don't even Honestly, give them. The most unbelievable part is that nobody shot themselves in the dick like three seconds after getting. The- oh yeah, <laughs> that is true. There were a lot of Americans here, and I'm very surprised that that did not happen. There's a lot of. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, they just basically give a crash course on how to use a gun. I mean, they don't even do basic training here. They don't even say like, hey, you at least get like one or three weeks mm. to just, you know, hey, let's at least get a custom and do stuff. It's like, nope, th- th- we don't have time. You get a gun. He's going to go out there, shoot. This is how you, you know, this is where they're vulnerable. Mm-hmm. They're vulnerable from their neck to their stomach. That's when you aim. You just shoot like this and boom, there you go. Um, gear, um, uh, you can keep your cargo shorts. That's fine. We're going to maybe give you a little vest. That's about it. We're not going to give you uniforms. Mm-hmm. We're not going to give you helmets. Um, you just take this and that's basically it. And we're going to just shove you out there and see what you do. Um, so I thought... The beginning of it, I think, was really cool. Just you know, illustrating the point of showing the urgency of this war um, and the absolute just kind of 
you know, kind of like, what's the point of it all? You know, especially like, because Chris Pratt is a, a teacher in this. And he's talking to, you know, his high school students about mm-hmm. like, you know, like, it's like, why should I even pay attention to the school or grades? Like, you know, I, you know, we see the news and it's like, there's no chance we're even winning this war. So what the hell is the point of even trying in school? And, you know, like tons of people who go to this future. I mean, the, the aliens are just massacring humans on a, on a mass scale. And when you look at these creatures, you get why. I mean... They're they're fast and they got all these multiple tentacles that shoot spikes and they got these teeth and you know what I mean I mean they're just knocking off you you totally understand why and you really have to make sure you aim at their stomach or at their neck because they have these hard shells on their backs that they just kind of cover up with that just makes shooting them you know shooting through it impossible so I thought that was kind of a good element uh, you know in the movie and I thought that that urgency that that kind of uh, you know, sense of dread was was very much you know, you know, instituted very very well, um, and the action you know what I mean mm. I, when they get into it when they finally jump is intense you know what I mean when they're in the thick of it and they're fighting these creatures and when mm. you see it for the first time I thought that was like really good I thought that was a, a good intense moment as well. Um, what did you guys think about you know kind of the beginning of the film and 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 kind of general thoughts on it? Uh. So, at first, my first thought was just like how I couldn't imagine every government hopping on board so swiftly with this plan, um, especially ours. <laughs> um, and that was probably like the first thing, but I gave that a pass. Um, and I, I think they did a decent enough job with the news coverages showing like, look, you are going to have these people that are going to be out here spreading like the conspiracy theory saying it's not of, real of or whatever course. uh because yes, we, we, we live in a world where QAnon is very much a thing yeah yeah um but i did enjoy sort of the comedy aspect of it um of them just being like these you know these past 40 years old people just like having to go fight a war you have like a whole bunch of older people um like one one joker like looked like he needed a cane <laughs> um and they were just like oh here's a gun you're not gonna be here in in the future so <laughs> okay just go um uh i did like also the 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 sort of pseudoscience with the time travel i i i'm glad that they didn't try to go over they didn't go in too in depth with it they just said look we figured this out but it's not perfect we need people of this specific time so we don't screw up the timeline. <laughs> and that was just the simple, like, you know, like a very, very simple clear cut answer. We, you know, I'm here for it. Um, and then once we get into the actual, like, you know, meat and potatoes of the film, I did enjoy how it was kind of like a video game uh, format with the mission structure. You have sort of like this escalating um, sort of journey in terms of threat levels and like uh even like sort of a boss battle uh here and there um but uh i i enjoyed that part for what it was what do you think nick honestly i was kind of bored with the Mm. first act of this up until they brought in jk simmons who (laughs) is a guy who can make any take anything even the dog shittiest of scripts and turn it into something awesome just by nature of him being jk motherfucking simmons mm-hmm. and he looks absolutely but, jacked um, i mean he looks i mean you know what i mean he looks yeah i mean yeah, great he became, yeah. yeah he became like jim gordon yeah i mean you know so i was he, wondering why they didn't recruit him for a second <laughs> that was my thing too it was like god damn why didn't you like recruit jk yeah if he's so easy to find like look just like <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, I dug the dynamic between him and Chris Pratt. I think Mm -hmm. um, some of the comedic beats, I think it's uh, they're a little too goofy with Mm -hmm. the the tone they're going for here. But I thought the actors managed to pull it off. Like Sam Richardson, who we're going to talk about later with uh, Werewolves Within, I dug the hell out of his performance. He's, like, comedic enough, but he's not stealing the show by uh, joking way too much. Um, the action, again, yeah, when you go to that first scene, it is intense. And 
and it is dire. It gave me a lot of vibes of something like Independence Day, Edge of Tomorrow, mm. or I guess Live, Die, Repeat. I still don't know what the fuck to call that movie. <laughs> um, but the action, I dug it. However, this movie is way too goddamn long, and it has a four. It's a four act movie when it doesn't need to be four acts long. Mm. I mean, I, I I do agree. Like certain parts of, I guess if we want to call it the fourth act, um, don't. I, I do wonder maybe if you could have shortened it a bit. Um, but like I understood once you got to the midpoint why this was the route that we had to go. Now. Is it a little contrived? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But everything we've seen up until that point had been contrived to begin with. Like the military mm. strats, dumb. <laughs> the, <laughs> the the whole idea of you Basically, know. Basically, if you're the if you're a military in like any sci-fi movie ever, you're gonna mm. be dumb as fuck. But to yeah. be fair, that is also just the military. <laughs> I mean, like you guys have actual experience. I don't know how like you know how true uh this was to you guys but it just felt like some of the strats here were like look there's a better way to do that you could send a drone please just like teach teach the people of today how to build like you know super advanced stuff have them like send drones your way or whatever pick up that little vial that you want the humans that are 40 years old and can barely run to pick up like you could have done you could have sent a drone for that (laughs) uh but you know um but I, I what i did enjoy of this sort of second act of this film was a dynamic uh is it spoiler for me to say this because i didn't watch the trailer um is a spoiler for me to say this dynamic or should uh, i just say the actor's name i mean do you, you, stick you, with just the actor's name for, for the second you got to you, you you'll, you'll you'll figure it out like i figured that if, if you've seen any time travel movie ever you you will have figured it out by just the second this person appears on screen all i'm gonna say is you know like vin diesel once said it's family <laughs> it's all about family <laughs> and when they, and when they do focus yeah, on this, the family this this, this I, movie would have given dom toretto a hard on oh yeah oh yeah and when they do focus on the family dynamics like i i enjoyed that quite a bit it is a it is an interesting situation that Chris Pratt has found himself in um, with this character, because you get to see their relationship kind of uh, evolve in a way, and then have, make it so that he reflects back on the present day much differently. I thought they handled that pretty well, um, but it is you know in that th- in that final act where we start to just get answers that are just like convenient. And we get answers that are kind of just like, um, all right, let's just blow this up and then we'll get there. <laughs> we found it. Like, we got mm. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I see what you're saying. I think when you bring up the, the, the aspect of family in this movie, I thought, you know, when it was Chris Pratt and J.K. Simmons, um, I, thought those were, I thought those were also really good no, scenes. Gotta, no, you got to say it like Toretto. Oh, uh, like family, like that. You know what I mean? Like, you got to say it like Toretto. <laughs> Yeah, family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when it's about family. <laughs> um, you know, I think Chris Pratt and J.K. Simmons, they do, you know, you know, work really well. I think maybe because J.K. Simmons, I mean, he, I mean, a lot of times he's acting circles around mm-hmm. Chris Pratt. But, um, you know, I, I do think that, he's you know. a motherfucking legend. Let's be real. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously so. And, and J.K. Simmons, amazing actor. And he elevates all the material he's ever in. Um, and you know, when, you know, I think those scenes are kind of good. I mean, it's a little kind of conventional, you know, you were never there for me, daddy issue type stuff going on, but, um, between him and and Mm -hmm. JK Simmons, but I think, you know, his character is a really cool character and I wish he was in the movie a lot more. I think, you know, I mean, this movie's two hours and 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. There's definitely not enough, you know, uh, JK Simmons in it. And I do feel the length. I mean, like Nick was talking about, I mean, it's, it's, you know, uh, uh, kind of a lengthy movie and especially since it has kind of like these two big you know acts that happen at the end it's like you know what i mean it, it just kind of keeps going after that after the first big one it's like oh man we still got 20 more minutes left it's like damn um 
of this. It kind of reminded me of like Hobbs and Shaw when the, like the ending of that movie happened, and then all of a sudden it's like, no, we got another ending to happen. I'm like, damn, y'all ain't done yet. <laughs> I mean, we going to Samoa. <laughs> yeah, uh, you no, know, we, no, we have to, <laughs> no, we have to like um, keep the rock happy. So yeah. we're going to Samoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. You know, you know, when it comes to the bad parts of this movie, um, I will say just kind of the, you know, overall kind of mess it is towards the end of it of just wrapping things up, of trying to come to a conclusion, and all of a sudden mm. they just they can't do certain things. Um, I will say like you know after the old, you know the first kind of intensity of seeing these creatures, you know the action set pieces of that, um, you know it kind of wears thin. You know it's just a lot of just. You know, big guns shooting alien creatures. Okay, you know there you yeah. go, and you know you can tell like you needed a, some variation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I mean, and it's nice. I mean, Amazon. I mean, it doesn't look like a cheap movie for sure. I mean, they definitely put a lot of money into it. They definitely put mm-hmm. a lot of money no, into this it. No, this was supposed to come out through. Uh, this was supposed to come out through Paramount Pictures, and it was supposed mm-hmm. to be a lot bigger of a deal than it is. Than I guess it is through Amazon because this is directed by Chris McKay, who. Mm. Uh, is mostly comes from an animation background who did the Lego Batman movie mm. and for a long time was attached to to the DCEU's version of Nightwing. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I see that because it, it definitely looks like something on the big screen. Um, Chris Pratt is a lead. Um, I think he's he's solid. Um, I think he, you know, you know, is a relatable everyman lead in this. Um, and he's got good enough charm mm. Um, to to, to kind of carry the thing and and you know make you follow him a good time, um, which I think is is pretty good. And then Sam Richardson, I mean, he's the funny black sidekick character, you know what I mean? Um, and eh, I mean, I, I think he does good at I mean what he's supposed to do, um, and 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 necessarily mm-hmm. you know you know what he's there for, um, and you know overall, uh, I would say it's. It, it's it's a good dumb fun sci-fi action film that's perfect to watch on tv you know mm-hmm. what i mean like like amazon like how netflix has tons of those on netflix that you could watch you know what i mean some better than others very much so um some are just kind of just so plain dull that you just can't even really enjoy them all that much yeah. um like we saw that one netflix movie with anthony mackie um i think it was called what outside the wire oh, uh, outside the wire yeah, um, that. That was the. Yeah, that was that was the movie with Anthony Mackie and Damon uh, Idris in it, and yeah, I mean that that one was kind of really dull, and and, and it, it kind of didn't hold a lot of my attention. This one does hold the tension. I just think it goes on way too long, and is just kind of way too sloppy in a lot of the spots, and and so much convention, you know, like coincidences that happen, um, and you know, I just think it kind of runs out its 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 luster. Um, a lot of it. So for me, I'd give it a, a five out of ten. What about you all? Uh, so my biggest complaint with the uh, with the movie is that you do have these the supporting cast that kind of disappears for a good chunk of the movie, and a whole act even really. Um, and I think that if they had been there, their resolutions and their character arcs could have been more deserved Hmm. um and i also think that not including j uh jk simmons simmons's character in the not incorporating his character early on because he becomes so important later on kind of detracts from his arc as well um so i would have rewritten because like if you're gonna have like a main cast right you can't just shaft half of it and then like like for like a for like forty minutes, and then just like you know, just say that they came back differently, and then now they're gonna be like they're gonna have their arcs resolved now. Like no, no, we gotta see those arcs develop alongside our protagonists. Hmm. Um, but for what it was, you know, um, like Chris Pratt and Yvonne's um, Yvonne Stra- Strahovski. Strah- Strahovski. Yeah, Yvonne their Strahovski. dynamic was great. I, I enjoyed them. I bought their relationship. Um, uh, not going to spoil, uh, <laughs> but and I liked how it developed. Um, and I really do think that the midpoint should have been the ending. 
you really could have ended it at that midpoint, and I mm. think the movie would have been better off for it. Uh, would have sent that message in a lot stronger than fleshing out uh, the nitty the nitty gritty of all the little minute resolutions that they didn't need in this. Mm. Um, I heard that there's a sequel. I don't want it. <laughs> it wraps it up very. It wraps up the story very very well. I mean, well, not well, but it's like literally as tight as it can be in a bow. Uh, but overall, I'd say it's like a like a six. I think it does a little bit more than I expected, I guess. Um, and that whole family aspect, I thought, was pretty well done. Very well done. Hmm. Hmm. So with me, I I had my expectations lowered thanks to a, a friend of the show, uh, Josh Hunter from uh, The Real Pineapple. Shout out mm. to you. He, I think I talked to him about this. He gave this movie like a zero out of 10. Really? So yeah, my expectations were lowered and I was pleasantly surprised to see how much of this movie ended up working for me. Like uh, Chris Pratt, I think he's an, a decent leading man, but I think if you, but I think he's at his best when he's given other people a playoff. Mm-hmm. Like he's at his best when he's acting in a scene with J.K. Simmons or with Sam Richards, Richardson, excuse me, and even uh, Yvonne Strahovski. When and Betty Gilpin, who? Why did you get Betty Gilpin if you give her jack shit to do? Yeah, yeah. That's that's a fucking no no for me. Mm-hmm. But um, I think Chris McKay, he's because uh, I think this is his first live action film, and I thought he did it really well. The effects here look really good. The action. Um, at least in the in the first big set piece it's tense it's tight and it really works but a lot of the character stuff the longer the movie goes on some of it more often than not falls flat for me for that i'd say this is closer to a five out of ten and but just like with black widow there's nothing here that's like outright bad it's just fairly mediocre it's a mediocre action movie that is that is straight up stealing from other <laughs> much better <laughs> summer blockbusters good monsters though that's why i got the six for me creature good design monsters is, <laughs> creature design is dope it, it's very uh, different for what we normally see of monster aliens and i do like their origin even though the way you find it is kind of contrived yeah the way you find it and like the little dig of a message it mm. comes in way too late yeah I mean, they did foreshadow it, you know. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, with the photo. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is your uh... in the background that you yeah. very well could have missed? So, what is your uh, rating for it? Oh, for me, it was a five out of ten. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I uh, uh, right there, pretty much with you all. Um, yeah. I mean, I I think you may get some enjoyment out of it. You know, to a degree, I mean, it, maybe it's a good movie to watch mm. with the sound off. You know what I mean? If it's playing on TV and you're maybe out somewhere and going, like, oh, man, I kind of like this scene. It's a good I wouldn't scene. say that. You know what I mean? It's kind of a good scene. You know what I mean? Um, maybe if you do something where you can just, you know, get rid of all the just the dialogue and keep all the action noises, keep all the gunshots and the explosions, maybe just do something like that. And just not just hear the hater. Talk, uh, talk maybe that. that right. Uh, that would elevate the material a lot for me. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, that's uh, that's the Tomorrow War. Um, next up, we have Werewolves Within. So only Chase and Nick saw it. I wonder, can Chase and Nick get through this review together in eight minutes? Can they beat my time? I don't think so. <laughs> I yeah, absolutely. Uh, to sum it up, to sum up the story, it is a uh, who done it with werewolves. Maybe. That is, yep, that is the very, very basest premise. But the reason yeah. we're talking about this is this is the second feature film of Josh Rubin, mm-hmm. who last year made a film that made both mine and Chase's best of list with Scare Me. And this time it's uh, Sam Richardson, who we mentioned in uh, uh, The Tomorrow War. He's uh, the lead role here as a new park ranger who gets paired up with uh, Milana Weintraub, who you all know as the AT&T girl, <laughs> as a poster war- postal worker who has taken him around meeting all the various uh, various insane personalities that live in this small town during a snowstorm. And 
wouldn't you know it, there might be a werewolf among them. So this is or basically a, just a murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a murder mystery with hints of a werewolf. And mm. just like with Scare Me, I think this movie it's bitingly funny. I love the chemistry with Richardson and Bangtrub. It was giving me a lot of flashbacks to Ruben's last film and damn Sam Richardson he is just so charming and mm. his optimism is so fucking refreshing especially to see in a horror movie especially with uh, when comparing it to Scare Me just how down and dour uh, Josh Rubin's character in that film was mm-hmm. yeah no, I, I, I love that dynamic because um, uh uh, Cicely kind of takes that more sort of like, I guess, I don't want to say like realistic approach, but like that more like grounded, more like slightly more negative approach. Um, and they do, and they have a great chemistry together, bouncing off back and forth. Um, but yeah, so throughout this entire thing, I was just like, I thought it was hilarious that the that the that Sam Richardson was cast as Finn, um, because it's basically just like a whole like having a black actor play this character of a park ranger in this uh, very white town added an extra funny layer to it. Because this whole time I'm just like, brother, why are you even there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like just like the whole message. One of the messages was just like. Just, just mind your business. Like, just let these white folk do what they do in this <laughs> little town. You don't need to be there. Um, and the whole time, it is a good. It is a good. They do a great job at introducing all these wacky characters. Um, a couple standouts for me were, uh, for me were um, George Basil, who played like this sort of like heroin addict, I guess, um, and like his dynamic with um, his wife or partner or girlfriend um played by i think it was sarah burns um Mm -hmm. they have like these very goofy like they're they're just idiots they have these goofy one-liners here and there they're talking about they are that hilarious white trash couple that yeah yeah and they even like that if you have ever driven through like the south or the country part of the midwest you have met these people Mm -hmm. and they even like have like a few lines where like you start to wonder their inte- like to question their intelligence like are they smarter than they let on um and the whole like the sort of uh what should i call this conflict it's kind of like a b it's kind of like a subplot is that you know you're in like this sort of nature preserve town and you have glenn flesher's character coming in trying to the big bad gas company yeah build a gas build a pipeline through it um so you have like all these characters that have their own opinions on it which is great you know um all all these characters have believable opinions on it too mm. um even even some q anoners in here looking <laughs> <laughs> at parents um but yeah i thought the town itself was very fleshed out a lot of fun with it um how do you feel about the conclusion we're not going to spoil but how do you feel about how it handled sort of like the reveals because i think it did a decent job me i genuinely love the reveal um mm. i absolutely did not see it coming and mm. um <clears throat> again a lot the how you feel about the ending rooted in how you felt about every character's motivation throughout mm-hmm. this entire thing i feel like and <clears throat> and what really works about it is it's taking itself seriously but it knows when to poke fun at itself and have fun because <laughs> yeah we we talked about this in the group chat it had like one of my favorite needle drops of the last uh a, a lot i'd say a long time with uh the sign <laughs> yeah yeah and once you see like once you realize what happens it's kind of just like oh wow that was a lot more on the nose <laughs> than i thought it was uh but no, that was great. Um, yeah, no, I'm giving this maybe, I want to say a light eight. Um, and the only reason why I'm saying like a light eight is kind of because I do wonder if that sort of second, that third act, 
was a little bit rushed, but I did enjoy it. Um, I enjoyed the mayhem and the chaos. Like, it was just chaotic as, as hell. I did enjoy that. Yeah, um, this, is a, this is essentially like a quarantine movie. Because <laughs> it's, like, all about people trapped together turning on each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it reminded me of that one uh, Tarantino film that I can't remember right now, the name. Um, dogs? No, but similar, yes. I do, I do get why you said that first, but it was, um, what was it called? Oh, Hateful Eight. Yes, Hateful Eight, yes. Mm. Um, but yeah, no. Well, what did you think, Nick? Me? Um, uh, I absolutely love this movie. The chemistry with Richardson and Weintraub is incredible. Uh, Josh Rubin, he's really stepping into his own as a director. This is a gorgeous looking film. And he's showing that, yeah, he's great at directing actors. Well, this is much more ambitious because you have double the cast of uh, Scare Me. Yeah, um, the triple. The twists and turns of this, I thought, worked really well. And it's just a very fun, funny, and at times very tense horror film. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely love this. This is an 8 out of 10. Strong 8.5 for me out of 10. Mm-hmm. And it does some of the things that you expect it to do, but then it turns it on its head, which I thought was very clever. And it even makes fun of a lot of the tropes that they that they pull. So, mm. yeah, good movie. Check it out, Nick. Oh, Josh. Uh, okay. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Seven minutes, 20 seconds, 25 seconds. Pretty good. Uh, pretty good time. You owe us like $10 now. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's like $10. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, no, I don't think so. Even with questions. <laughs> I didn't ask questions. Uh, I, no, we uh, asked questions to you. Oh, yeah, that's exactly why. I didn't ask questions to you, though. That's, that's why it was seven minutes. And well, we asked questions to each other. We bounced off of each other. See, uh, you, you were a one-man show, and you failed. No, I wasn't yeah. a one-man show because you, you asked me over. questions. You were a one-man show, and you went over. Uh, you asked me questions. Okay. You're talking to me throughout. We all take L's, man. We all You're talking take L's. to me out there. You all L's. talk. It's all good. Everybody does it. All good. Uh, Let's wrap up the show. Uh, all right. So. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. I'm trying to watch that Climber Grinner fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That fight. UFC 264. So, uh, Richard Donner, uh, legendary director, um, has passed away. Richard Donner, famous for, of course, Superman, Lethal Weapon, The Goonies, uh, died at the age of 91. Uh, Rich Donner um, had a big impact on the film. Uh, Nick, do you want to talk more about it? And uh, just you know, since I know you were kind of excited to uh, talk about this, and specifically Richard Donner. Yeah, the man is a goddamn legend. He created uh, be even before Superman. He made one of the greatest horror movies of all time with The Omen, and just one of the greats. And with out him and Superman, we wouldn't have the superhero genre as we know today. It mm -hmm. all a lot of that, the existence of of Batman, the Dark Knight, the MCU, all of that is owed to him with 1978 Superman, and he's shown that he's one of the most versatile directors ever, going from a horror film in The Omen to Superman, of uh, one of the greatest superhero movies ever, to something kid friendly like The Goonies and doing mm -hmm. a hard R noir film and lethal weapon mm. and he's a guy that for me has never really had a misstep well maybe lethal weapon 4 but even in his later career like 16 blocks that's that's a great action crime film mm. yeah. uh, Chase do you have any kind yeah, of that, that diverse uh, I, I don't really have too much to say because um, I did unfortunately miss out on a ton of his movies, but the big ones I did see like Goonies, Superman, Lethal Weapon. Um, and I mean, just those three in particular, that speaks to how diverse uh, and how, how much of a range he had as a director, you know? Like, you know, you could look at all those, all three of those movies and you could probably, I mean, you could probably find some techniques here and there that he may have be used and has kind of become like a staple but like overall like if you had told me that that was the same director i would have been like really that's crazy <laughs> um because you know he's able, it seems like he was able to switch it up um 
and basically do films that he wanted to do rather than be pigeonheld into say like you know blockbuster action films or just like mm-hmm. indie films mm-hmm. or you know he didn't have a lane he seemed to do what he wanted which is great yeah. um so towards the, the latter part of his career uh rich Donnie said the last film he directed was 16 blocks starring bruce willis with uh with, with bruce willis in it um and he did kind of uh, most death uh yeah and most yeah. death yeah, there bruce willis in what i consider his last role where he gave a shit hmm. yeah um and with uh that one's because last one he directed um producing wise he produced a lot of the you know x-men stuff um you know all pretty much all the x-men films including even the new mutants um, him and his wife, uh, Lauren Schuller, they did a lot of kind of those producing. Um, so that's kind of mostly what he was doing toward the latter part of his career. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the guy had a you know really big historic, uh, you know, historical legacy because you mentioned how he kind of did the whole buddy cop thing with the Weapon. And that's still what a lot of people today base their buddy cop movies on is from Lethal Weapon. Um, and large mm-hmm. part of that is due, due to the direction of Richard Arnold and also due to the script writing of Shane Black as well. Um, you know, as, as being a huge, huge part of that as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, you know, rest in power to Richard Donner, um, and to his contributions to film and everything like that. Um, because he was definitely uh, a legend, um, and lived a long life, 91 years old. Uh, that is a good life to live for sure. Um, all right. So moving on from discussing Richard Donner, we're going to discuss our final topic of the day. Um, which is just the what if trailer? Um, everybody here saw it, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I did not actually. I saw like screenshots. Okay, um, so it's just giving more, you know, kind of visuals for what if. Um, you know, the big thing about it is that it has a release date now, which is August eleventh, um, and uh, so it's coming pretty coming very soon. Um, which is great because Loki's about to end next week uh, or this upcoming week. Uh, Loki's about to end, mm-hmm. and so that's kind of great for that. Um, the animation style, um, really love it. Uh, really like Come the on, kind of one. Make I need my Marvel fix. Yeah, hmm. um, the animation I think it looks really great. Um, you know, really like kind of the cell shading kind of look it has with some of the characters. Um, one thing that people did note was mm-hmm. that with Robert Downey Jr. Um, you know, obviously he he's not in this. Like when they showed Tony Stark with the beginning of it, uh, where they, it's the scene from like the, the first Iron Man, the very beginning of it, where you see he's riding with the you know the military people in the Humvee, and um, it doesn't sound anything like a Robert Downey Jr. So I guess out of all the people that they brought back, because you, you hear Chad with Bozeman in this, where he plays um, T'Challa as Star Lord. Mm. I mean, clearly you hear that voice and you go, "That's you know uh, Chad with Bozeman." Was it because I mean? They couldn't get just Robert Downey Jr. back. They couldn't just pay him to come back. I wonder what was the whole decision behind that. Uh, because I think yeah, all that... That's, act- that's a lot of money, dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's expensive. Uh. Because I'm um, looking at the cast list for for What If, and a lot of people from the MCU are back. Like Chadwick Boseman that we've mentioned, Taika Waititi's back, uh, Sebastian Stan, he's back, Mark Ruffalo, Paul Rudd. But I think with some of the bigger roles, a lot of them are not going to be reprising it because I don't see Spider-Man's voice actor credited who we see in the trailer. And obviously, uh, Tony Stark, it's not Robert Jan- it's not Robert Downey Jr. doing the voice for him. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, and, the, you know, you, so you see that scene you know, where, of course, the Humvee flips over, explosion, everything like that. But instead, Killmonger shows up and he saves Tony Stark and from getting hit by the <laughs> rocket that stands there. So, um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that they're going to kind of be playing with. Um, <laughs> when you saw the trailer, Nick, uh, what were your kind that's of... That's a totally different dude. That is not Killmonger. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, well, it's, you know... I'm watching it right now. Again, the biggest thing that you can say about this show is intriguing. That's mm-hmm. That was kind of like the whole premise of, of the What If comic that you take these scenarios that were like possibilities and you get to explore them in like a single issue. Mm -hmm. And here it looks like they're taking full advantage of that and going as zany and as crazy as they want. Like have like, what if Tony Stark didn't get uh, captured 
what if uh what if uh star lord was uh t'challa what if mm. uh what if there were zombies running around <laughs> mm. what if uh what if Erskine said, uh, looked at Steve Rogers and said, nah, fuck that. We got a perfect super soldier with Peggy. Hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And instead, just put Steve in the suit instead. Uh, uh, Iron Man suit of his own. Um, yeah. I, you know, uh, so what do you think about the, just the animation of it and, and the possibilities of, of, of the stories that are going to tell? Because did you ever read the What If comics from Marvel at all? I read a couple issues. Like I think the one I remember the most is uh, uh, was what if Spider Man joined the Fantastic Four, and that's how we got stuff mm. like uh, the Future Foundation. Hmm. That was like the biggest thing I remember from What If. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what about you, Chase? I am very unfamiliar with the sort of What If stuff. All I know is that they're. I'll, that they are pulling a lot of like concepts that I've heard that were in the what if comics or in alternate timelines and whatnot, like uh, like Peggy being the Winter Soldier, the zombies. I'd heard about the zombie comics, um, uh, but I am looking forward to it. I you know just it's crazy. The most unbelievable thing to me so far has been Killmonger saving Tony Stark, <laughs> uh, but. You know, that is a totally different dude. So, you know, I do wonder how they're going to flesh out the different personalities, I guess, to sort of show the differences. Because um, I'm sure T'Challa is going to be a totally different man. Uh, he's probably going to be quipping a lot, too, and uh, yeah. as a as a, as a um, Star-Lord. So, um, should be interesting. Should be interesting. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be kind of a bittersweet watch because this mm. is... This really is uh, Bozeman's last performance before uh, his uh, before he passed away. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, mm. Is there any story that you all like to see in What If? Um, anything you know of that you would, you would really really like to see in the series? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I saw one where it looked like Ultron. Uh, Ultron never lost, so we might actually mm. see like in real Age of Ultron story, unlike what we got in the in the second Avengers movie. <laughs> mm. yeah. That uh, sounds cool. Yeah. That sounds cool. All the crazy stuff that I've heard of, like where the MC, like the Marvel universe gets apocalyptic, that sounds cool to me. Mm. Uh, uh, but. I am excited to see what they do with this Spider-Man because he doesn't look nothing like Tom. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I do wonder like what uh, that uh, Spider-Man is going to be. Maybe if that's even going to be like a different Spider-Man because I do know that there's other um, Spider-Men that are not Tom. I mean, that are not Peter that are also white. Uh, I forgot the dude's name. Uh, hold on. Mm. What is his name? Uh, yeah, there's a possibility like uh, Ben Riley is. Uh, yeah, Ben. Spider Man. Um, there was a Latino Spider Man who's like mm. in Houston. I can't remember the guy's name. But he's from like the future, so I don't mm. think. Oh, Miguel O'Hara. Yeah. 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 Uh, who showed up in the and end of Spider Verse? Yeah. It's interesting to see because it looks like some shorts might be connected, especially mm. given how uh, Loki's going. All of these are like various timelines, and mm -hmm. I wonder if they're gonna connect that and tie it into multiverse of madness. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, and that's why I was thinking like the timing of this is great because you're tackling the end of that you know perfect straight line timeline. So now we get into the what ifs, because hmm. um, now these universes are allowed to exist. Hmm. So that would be cool. Yeah. Um, all right, people, uh, that is it. Uh, that was our last topic of the day. Uh, we are going to get out of here. Thank you again for the stream queens, for Sadie's, for Vivian, um, and for Sarah for coming on. That was very, very much appreciated. They added a great perspective to things. Um, loved their, their, uh, thoughts on Black Widow. Um, and I thought they did a, a really, really great job. I'm glad they were able to make it on, um, and give, gave us their time. Don't forget to check them out. Um, on Twitch, on the Twitters, everything like that, IG, 
Um, um, very, very good content that they put out there for people and, and very much fun. And you saw much, you know, how much great chemistry they had on the show, uh, with us today. Um, um, so, uh, it gives a wrap up, uh, to discuss our links. Um, you can find us on all the social medias. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the afternoon tune. Of course, on Instagram at the afternoon tune. You can also, uh, find us on wherever you listen to podcasts, like Spotify, like Apple podcasts. If you listen on Apple podcasts, hey, leave that good review for us. Uh, five stars that helps us out tremendously. If you do that, uh, you can also give us an email at the afternoon tune at uh, gmail.com. You can also tweet at us at uh, twitter.com slash the afternoon tune. Um, you want tweets put up there, and that's where we also give updates for our new content that we put up there as well. Uh, we get some g- great new art uh, that we've shown off now. Uh, Kofi Less um, is an artist that you know I commissioned um, to come in and do some art for us, um, putting it up now uh, on the stream. Um, you know, got all of us here. Good pick. Um, the, the artist, uh, I know Nick had a problem. They gave Nick a big-ass forehead, uh, receding hairline. Uh, that's all fixed <laughs> now. Um, he doesn't have that anymore. That was kind of one of the also issues. dark as hell. Um, yeah, Chase is, Chase is a little two shades darker than he is, uh, but he's got that dirty-ass tank top that he likes yeah, to wear. He, he looks like he's going to be a villain in a Tyler Perry movie. You know, I mean, um, he, yeah, he looks definitely looks like the the. And heart. you're a lot more happier in this photo than I've ever seen you. <laughs> um, I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm a happy guy. Uh, that's pretty much how level of happy I am. But she nice, you know. Artist gave nice blush anime cheeks. You know, I've never I mean? seen you smile. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, no- dude, even on the show, I've never seen you like smile. Uh, yeah, what? You're, you're, you're as bad. deadpan as it gets. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Uh, but uh, also Dusk is there. Uh, Dusk, who's one of the guests on the show, he's there showing up. Um, and it's nice that she put the nice backgrounds of all our different respective cities that we're in, uh, given that we're doing the you know this podcast from different parts of the world. So that that was very cool. Um, of the artist, I really like the art. Um, if you are, I want to check her out. Uh, the artist uh, Kofi Liss um, on Twitter. Um, let me go check that out real quick. So just to put up, if you want a commission for some art. Um, and everything like that because she does a very good job. Uh, but to finish promoting the link. So uh, you can also find us on Twitch, of course, right now, right? Uh, Twitch.com uh, slash TV says the afternoon tune. Um, you can check us out there uh, where we're streaming uh, every typically every Friday or Saturday, um, depending on the show. Next week, uh, we got coming up Space Jam. Space Jam 2 with uh, LeBron James. We're going to be discussing that and also do a retro review of the original Space Jam with Michael Jordan. Um, we're also be just doing that. Uh, we're doing the that real Space Jam. Yeah. yeah. Um, are we doing that uh, Friday or Saturday? I think it's. I think uh, we should... either day works for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll work it out. Um, and so let me uh, put up her information right here, just in case you want to check it out. Do some more art and put it on the stream. Uh, check her out there. Uh, yeah. So putting it on stream right now. So yeah. Um, if you just want to check out, so she does really good stuff with the art, really nice. Um, you know, she also goes to college, you know, so she uses, you know, that to pay for college as well, the commissions that she does, um, if you want to hit her up. All right. So, uh, also, uh, we are also on TikTok. If you want to check us out, we are TikTokers now doing all that good TikTok stuff. Um, putting up the clips and everything like that from our shows. Uh, get a short form content, and of course, always on YouTube. Where stuff you can... that isn't gonna get stolen by stuff yeah. that's not gonna get stolen by white people and get paid millions. Yeah, but it'll happen. They're gonna get like white versions of all of this. You're gonna get you're gonna get one dude with like a curly fro. That's me. You got like the fade cut dude. That's gonna be you. Um, and, and then they're just gonna get a full white Nick <laughs> with with like a even whiter. Bubbles. <laughs> Don't worry, bubbles. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and bubbles of course, without like the gray thing, uh, <laughs> the gray stripe. <laughs> um, and of no. course, on um, YouTube.com slash Afternoon Tune, you can check us out there. Like, subscribe, comment. Uh, just hey, hit a milestone over 100 subs. So pretty proud of that. Uh, help us get to 200 subs. That'd be very, very, very much appreciated. Uh, Chase, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Mr. Chase Mac. Um, that's going to be M R C H A Y S E 
M A C at uh Twitch, uh Twitter and Instagram. Where can they find you, Nick? Yep, you can find me uh Twitter, Instagram at Night and Day Nick. That's a N I G H T, the letter N D A Y and Nick. Where can they find you, Bubbles? <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at B U B dot B L E S zero nine twenty two. Mm, yes, very much so. Good bubbles content. Um, all right, so good show, people. Um, hey, so to all you people out there listening to this on Twitch, on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, wherever, don't forget to always stay tuned. <laughs>